going and it's right there guys hello everybody happy friday night you guys are not gonna believe this but the valentinos are here we're over from instagram we are going to be here every other week but then the first friday of every single month we will be over on instagram so if you guys can just mark your calendars just remember that that first week skip a week then we'll be here which means we're going to be spending good friday with you guys this year so Hopefully, if you guys are, you know, done doing some things on Good Friday, getting your ham together and all those Easter preparations, maybe you can come join the evening with us because we're going to be doing something special, aren't we, fellas? We are. It's going to be okay. All right. What? No, no. Get ham on Good Friday? Well, no, you go get your ham on Good Friday. Oh, that okay. way you have it. Yes. Oh, I, thought yes. We were going, I thought we were going ham on Friday. No, oh. that's a no-no. Oh, no, 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 no. Y'all, y'all are up with the like ten years ago lingo. That's all I'm gonna say. I know some folks in the comments know what I'm referring to. Oh, oh. my gosh! Like, and you, I mean, you. Well, yeah, we won't even get into the whole Catholic thing. But what I meant to say was, is once you guys go out and get your Easter ham on Good Friday, then come hang out with us. That's what I was trying to say. I don't want to be accused of saying anything, you know, wrong. Like I. No, I did not say with me and Bill on Monday night if you guys were here. I didn't say. I went back and it's I didn't. Video. What? It's on video. No, it doesn't. I didn't say it. I just, they didn't. All right, guys. Welcome in, everybody. We're so happy you're here to, to join us. As we go live tonight, our official mod and bid ender is the one and the only Karen G. We thank you so much. Also, the backup mod and bid ender is the lovely Kim of Desert Gal. If you are not familiar with all the fellows on the screen, I'm going to introduce them. Then they'll quickly say hello. Then we're going to say hello to everybody. Bill's going to tell us how the sale is going to work, and then we'll get into it. So <laughs> on the screen here with me is the one, the only Bill of Garden Guy Bill. Please subscribe to his YouTube and his Instagram. Below him is John of Everyday Holiday Displays. He does have a YouTube, so subscribe to that and also follow him on Instagram. And below me is the one, the only mid-century Mr. himself, Brian. Uh, make sure you follow him over on Instagram. So, Bill, how are you doing, sir? You doing good? I can talk. I'm not coughing. That's it's, good. I, I don't want. I don't wish that on anyone because it was like almost three weeks of craziness. Yeah, that was bad this year. John, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing good. Can't All complain. Right. I mean, I can't complain, but I won't complain. I'm good. <laughs> Brian, how are you doing? It was a long week, but this makes the end of the week that much better. All right. And we're happy you guys. We're happy you guys are here. We're happy that everyone's here joining us. Hopefully we can set your weekend off on a good tone. Hopefully you guys are here for some good vintage because we have some good stuff here tonight, gang. We have some really, really good stuff here. As I say hello to everybody, the thumbnail this evening, we can thank the one, the only Bill, of Garden Guy Bill. He created it along with tonight's wallpaper and background. So I feel like I should hand off like a like an Emmy or a Grammy or something like that. I mean, I feel pretty fancy with this background, don't you, fellas? I do. <laughs> Very fancy. I mean, it's really fancy. Well, hello, Desert Gal. So good to see you. Again, she'll be our backup mod and bid ender. There's the very lovely Karen G, the official mod and bid ender for the evening. Thank you always, Karen. There is our friend William in the chat. Good to see you, sir. Hopefully you are doing well. We got Muggsy here with us. That's a new name to me, Muggsy. Hello. Welcome in. Hopefully you're here to hang out with us tonight. I'm a snap and it's my man. It's Gavin. It's Grady Grupo Vintage Recordings. If you are not subscribed to him, please do. He has a really fun channel. Plays music, plays it on a turntable. He spotlights a lot of the things that he purchases from other sellers. He's also the other half of the Gillette Corporation. So please show them some support like they show all of us and subscribe to his channel. We'd greatly appreciate it. And Kim, please drop in your links. And Karen, please drop in Gavin's links when and if you can, whenever. We'd greatly appreciate it. Hello, Ann Kiki. So good to see you. Happy Friday. There he is, Mr. Boston, Mr. Blue himself, the one, the only. Mark, so good to see you, sir. How are you? We got Dusty Moose here with us. How are you, Dusty Moose? We got followed by Julie. It's so good to see you, Julie. We got the one, the only Cheryl. How are you? Treasures by the Sea. If you guys want to see some epic vintage, follow her over on Instagram because she has an incredible collection. There she is, our vintage sister, what I think is one of the queens of kitsch, the one, the only, Enamor Amy. It's so good to see you. Please make sure you're subscribed to her channel. Amy, if you could put your link in. Let's try to get everybody's subscriptions up as high as we can. 
There she is, the one, the only, Karen Kennedy. So good to see you. Meow, meow. Hopefully you are doing well. How are you, sir? Good to see you, John. Welcome in. Happy Friday, everybody. I'm going to move a little quickly here. Hello, Dawn. Good to see you. Hello, Linda, my mother. I love you. Good to see you here in the chat tonight. Followed by Bug. Good to see you. We got Glowy Girl here with us tonight. How are you? Good to see you. Who else is here? We got Laura here with us. So good to see you. Welcome in, everybody. Happy, happy weekend. It's the weekend, and it's also St. Patrick's Day weekend. So hopefully you guys are gearing up for some St. Patrick's Day festivities. Who else is in here with us? I see Melissa. How are you, Melissa? So good to see you. Followed by Buttermilk and Cream. It's so good to see you here tonight. How are you, Wanda? Welcome in, everybody. Meow, meow. Who else? Oh, there she is, Patty Rose. Good to see you, Patty Rose. Telling you, I'm dreaming about those desserts. We're going to have to have a conversation about those desserts, Patty. I don't know if you all saw her post. They look really good, really good. How are you, Peppermint Patty? Good to see you, friend. Hello, everybody. There's Trina, followed by Sandy. Good to see you. Hopefully, you're all doing well. How are you, Lisa? Welcome in here, everybody. If you want to say hello, please do. We got Carrie here with us, followed by Helen, the New England thrifter. Please give her channel a follow. She's got a really fun YouTube channel. How are you, Trendling? Good to see you. Happy Friday, everybody. Who else is in here with us? I see a couple duplicates, and we're down here to the bottom. So... We'll click on Patty here. Nope, wait, it jumped. Hello, Dusty again. So guys, again, if you are not subscribed to everybody here on the channel or following them over on Instagram, please do. If you're watching this on the replay, we made it really simple for you. We put everybody's links down below. So all you have to do is click on it, go over and follow everybody. They would all greatly appreciate it. So now we're going to turn it over to the world-renowned, the one, the only, a, a certified Garden Guy Bill himself. To tell us how the sale is going to work here tonight, and then we're going to jump into it. All right, sir. Okay, thanks everyone for being here tonight. I'm going to do this quickly um, because we have 10 rounds of offer up style items tonight, as well as two rounds of uh, quick claims. So the way we do this is we'll do 10 rounds, then we will do a recap of anything that wasn't claimed, and then we stick around because then we're going to do our quick claims. Um, so it's going to be a fun, fun night. So 12 rounds each total for a total of 48 possibilities tonight Ooh. or more if we have choice rounds. Yeah. So um, the way it works is everything happens in the chat. I know you all know this, but just in case there's one or two new people here, I'm going to go over it. We will show you an item. Uh, we will give you a start price for that item. And you can uh, put your bid in the chat, starting at that start price in $1 increments. Now, if you decide to be a bidder, or if you decide that you want to engage in the chat and comment, which we love all night, you want to make sure that you're in the best version of the chat possible. And what that means is on your device, it should say live chat or all messages or some combination of those two things. If you see something that says top chat, you need to toggle out of that and get into all messages. Um, and that's the way you'll see, nothing will get filtered for you if you do that. Now, if you start experiencing a lag and you start thinking that maybe you're a little bit behind uh, the rest of us, which entirely is possible, there's a couple things you can do to make sure you are at the same place in the sale that we all are. The first thing you can do is close out your YouTube app come back in, click on the sale, then make sure that red line is all the way over to the right. That's the first way to, to um, account for the lag. The other thing you can do is hit your settings button. If you're on a computer, it's right down below you. And if you're on a device, if you tap on my face right now, you should see a little gear icon come up in the corner. Hit that gear icon, select playback speed, and set it to two times. That should catch you up to where we are in the normal sale especially if you're bidding and there's something you really, really want, that's a good idea. So the chat is there to use. We love to hear from you all, even if it's not related to what we're currently doing. Um, we love to learn about vintage. We try to share our knowledge. We know that there's lots of knowledgeable people here. We also love just to hear from you. We want to say hi to you if you're someone in the background. Maybe it's your first time here. Maybe you're someone who's typically hanging out in the lounge in the background. You can let us know you're here and we will we will um, we'll greet you. We'd be happy to do that. Um, as we are showing you items, uh, we will be describing them, telling you anything we know about them, telling you any condition issues that you need to know. And at a certain point, um, we will start a countdown if we get a couple of bids that come in. 
Uh, that countdown's going to start at 20 <clears throat> seconds. We've just kind of unilaterally decided we're going to start at 20 from now on, um, just to help you all with the lag. Um, and at the end of that 20 second countdown, we will say bid end. The highest bid before that bid end is typed in by our, our official bid ender, which is Karen Gillette. Um, the highest bid before that bid end has claimed the item. We do like to remind you that uh, a claim is a promise to pay. Um, and we also like to remind you that everything we're selling tonight is vintage. We will do our best to describe any condition issues that you need to know. But while we are showing the item is the best time to ask any questions that you have about the item, its history, its condition, anything that you need to know to make an informed purchase. Because again, they are vintage items. Um, we do offer an option on the Valentinos. Uh, called just in case. Uh, it's called a just in case bid. And just in case is for those of you who really want your best opportunity to claim an item. And you notice that there are a couple other people who are trying to go after it as well. Um, so what you would do um, in order to put in a just in case bid is you would let us know what the highest amount you'd be willing to pay for an item would be by typing in the letters JIC with that highest amount. Now, if you have the highest just in case before before the bid end, we will bid you up just $1 over the next highest bid or the next highest just in case. And again, it's just a way to ensure your best opportunity to get an item. Um, in the event of multiple just in cases, the other just in cases turn into bids. Uh, and that's helpful to know if there are multiple multiple items in the same round. Now we do ask two things if you are uh, if you're using just in case. The first thing is that you've already put in a regular bid before the use of the just in case. So you need to be an active bidder. And the second thing is just in case bids are only acknowledged when they happen during the countdown. If we see a just in case bid that comes in before we start the countdown, unfortunately we can't acknowledge it. And we would encourage you to put that just in case bid back in while we're counting down, but we're not gonna be able to remind you to do that because we don't stop our countdowns once we start them. In the, unless there's an emergency. I'm just thinking, what if my power goes out? And I, <laughs> <laughs> I think that happened. You're correct. It has happened. <clears throat> All right. So if you do claim an item tonight, uh, congratulations. And we need some information from you. All four of us bill using PayPal. In order for us to generate a PayPal invoice, we need your YouTube screen name, your real name, your shipping address, and your PayPal email address. You can email us those four things at the email addresses you see on our screen right now. In fact, you can take a screenshot right now, email all four of us in the same email with your information, and then we're all going to have it. Um, if you don't have a PayPal account, that's okay, um, because you can uh, click on the link that we're going to send you, and you can check out as a guest. If you prefer to pay via Venmo, um, you can actually use Venmo as a form of payment through PayPal. So that's not a problem as well. And the other thing to know about the way that the four of us work is we all use an online shipping service called Pirate Ship. And Pirate Ship allows us to get deep discounts um, to different areas of the country uh, based on where you are, um, but they are significantly uh, discounted from United States Postal Service and UPS. Um, Let's see. I do. I have some hot liquid. Thank you, John. I'm trying to keep the voice. There might be a little something in the hot liquid tonight. I don't normally do that, but just trying to, yeah, a little. It'll be fun. This will be fun. St. Patrick's Day this weekend. Come on, I'm Irish. <laughs> um, so let's see. What didn't I say? Um, I didn't say that I'm Garden Guy Bill. I ship from the windy mountains of northern New Jersey. I have power and internet tonight, so that's an accomplishment. <laughs> Um, I will be invoicing tomorrow, and I ship to the U.S. and Canada only. How about you, John? I'm John from Everyday Holiday Displays. I ship out of Chicago, Illinois, the windy city, but not windy because of the weather, windy because the politicians were too talkative and said a bunch of stuff <laughs> they shouldn't be saying. Um, I uh, will start invoicing tomorrow <clears throat> unless, 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 unless you want me to keep your box open because I have a sale on Tuesday afternoon over on Instagram. So if you want me to keep your box open through that sale, I'm more than happy to do that. I also have some items for sale in my static feed right now, some live sale leftovers. You can check that out and add to your box as well. That's all I've got to say. Over to you, Brian. I'm Brian from Mid-Century Mister. I ship from New York. Uh, I will be packing up 
more Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. That's more my time frame. I'm a little bit busier tomorrow, so I don't think I'll be get to too much getting to too much invoicing tomorrow. So look for Sunday, Monday, Tuesday time frame from me. One side note, Julie, if you go up into that gear wheel, you can also, if you're on your phone, you can change the quality. So sometimes it defaults to a lower quality. It also does that so it doesn't eat up a lot of your data. But if it's fuzzy for you, do what Karen said, but you can also go up into that gear wheel and change your quality so it's a little crisper, okay? Um, I ship from Pennsylvania. Um, I have open boxes for anybody who purchased on Monday night sale or Wednesday night sale, and I will do my best to combine anything you purchased tonight in there. Um, if it can't be packaged safely, I won't do it, but we'll do our best to get everything together for you. Uh, I will be packaging everything tomorrow. I do it every single Saturday and then Tina invoices in the evening or at night. Um, I also offer free pickup. I do own a brick and mortar in central Pennsylvania. Ironically, Mother Tucker's Antiques. Um, if you guys want to utilize that, just let me know. I'll invoice you for the item. And then once the invoice is paid, we'll communicate via email uh, when and how you want to pick it up. Again, gang, I always say you don't have to keep an open box with me. If you purchase, all you have to do is email the next day. I can package usually next day. Once it's paid, we can ship the very next day. So, uh, please, please always keep that in mind. I think that's it. There were a few more folks that jumped in. We want to say hello to everybody. Again, if I ever miss you, it is never intentional. It's probably because my eye didn't catch it or the chat moved. So please always keep that in mind. Hello, Naomi. It's so good to see you. How are you, Pat Robinson? It's so good to see you. Hello, Steel Whisper. Welcome in, everybody. Happy Friday, everybody. And I think that was everybody that I was trying to remember that had hopped in that we didn't say hello to. So, all right, gang, we're gonna get the sale started here tonight. Uh, we'll start with Bill, then we'll go John, Brian, and then myself, and then stick around because I can tell you right now, I have some mystery boxes coming up in our quick claim round. So y'all are gonna wanna stick around till the end. All right, Bill. Uh, I thought I'd start off the evening with a $1 start bid. How about yeah. that? Um, and it's some beautiful glass from the area where Jason and I live. It is a Westmoreland, beautiful milk glass, hand-painted uh, bud vase. Um, just starting at a dollar if anyone's interested. And it's one of the bigger ones. A lot of times they're around seven inches. This one, I think, is almost nine. I wrote it down. Yeah, it's nine inches, 2.75 inches across at the bottom. And it's in fantastic condition. Has this beautiful... It, repeating image of a rose on the bottom and then hand painted blue flowers. Maybe they're forget me nots. I don't know up here at the top, but it's super, super sweet. And it's got a really, really great opening. Let me just get some black to put behind it so you can all see. Yeah, super, super good. And I love these milk glass um, bud vases uh, that look like swung vases because they fit really, really nicely into a lot of different treatments, including regular swung vases, a milk glass, co glass collection. Um, if you're someone who has a lot of hand painted milk glass plates and you display them, these fit so nicely in between plates that are on plate stands. Uh, they work really great for holidays just to kind of pop out if you have a couple nice blooms that you got at the grocery store or that you picked out of your neighbor's yard just to pop those in here. Just really like a versatile piece of um, beautiful and everything tonight for me is about this. It's about spring. Um, I have such spring fever because in New Jersey now the weather is so warm. That's all I can think about. I drive past Home Depot and Lowe's and they still don't have enough stuff for me to look at. It's just it's driving me a little bit crazy. Love, love, I love the hand painting on these because they made so many different um, pieces, you know, that that go with it. So you can collect the whole variation from the wedding, you know, boxes to the covered candy dishes to other vases. I mean, that I think that's what I love. They have a lot of compatible pieces that go with. Yeah, those. that's kind of what I was getting at with those with the plates, too. There yeah. are just so many different things you can yeah. do. And then again, a piece of milk glass can sit in the middle of pretty much any other collection mm -hmm. that you have. Agreed. It just goes with everything. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start a countdown. It looks like we have a couple bids in on this. Uh, if, if anyone's interested in really grabbing it, you can use it just in case if you're an active bidder. And I'm going to start from 20. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 
13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. Yeah, see, normally these are only about this this tall, and you got you got an extra inch and a half here. I think it's nice. It's also a little girthier than a lot of them. And it's paneled, I should have said. It's not one of the round ones. It's paneled. You can see that, though. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming out on a Friday. We know this is not a normal time that we're here. Well, it is the normal time we're here, but since we're not here every week, it can be hard to remember. So we really appreciate it. Karen, thank you for the bid end. And Robin, with your just in case of 17, it is yours for 17. Congratulations and thank you all for your bids. All right. Jason, I have uh, my starting bid is $28. Um, I have some orphaned uh, Arnart bunnies. I guess I still have some Easter and spring things in my mix tonight. And this is one of them. So these were originally, and I'm, I'm assuming they are Arnart. They match Arnarts. They're just marked Japan on the bottom. They were originally chained. You can see the little pieces of ceramic where they would have had the chain attachments. But these have lost their big one. They don't have the mama or the daddy or whatever that large one is. It's just them alone against the world. Um, super cute. I love the pink. They're not the sugared ones. They're just pink. I'm going to take them off this little CD thing that I have them on right now just to show you closer. I love the expressions on these. Um, the only kind of, I mean, real, it's not really an issue. It's just like missing a little bit of the pink paint right there, just a tiny little bit right there. The way the mold was, there's a little bit of a line, but that's smooth when you feel it. It's not a, a crack or anything. Um, similarly, on the back of this one, there's a little bit of paint missing right there. But again, that's it's actually under the, it looks like it's under the glaze. But as you can see, they're super cute, great for displays. And I love the sizes on these. Um, these are about two and a half, two and a quarter inches tall. And then the sort of sitting up one is about one and a half inches. And then the laying down one is about two inches wide. Patty, I see you in at 28, looking for 29 or more. I just love these. I actually didn't realize I'd reached out to the guys. I was like, do you know if these are art or not? And I was like, where are they chained? And then I'm like, Durjan, they're the little hooks right there where the chains would have gone. So Patty's in at 28, not always in my brightest mode. Um, looking for 29 or more. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bid end. So we're looking for 29 or more or the bid end from, I already forgot, Karen Gillette, right? Yep, Karen G. Naomi, I see you're 29. So we're looking for 30 or more or that bid end. See, I like those little slots because you can tie a little bow in there to yeah. cover those up if you want to. Well, I, also, I, maybe you just have the bigger up. one. You know, yeah. sometimes people may have the bigger one, not these. Naomi, you got in there with a 29. These are coming to you. Thank you so much. All right. We'll get Jason, you going, Brian. Starting at $14, I have a hobbyist piece here that is, I'm calling her a bridesmaid. She could very well be a bride because she does have uh, the, this veil on. Um Really nice condition. She's about 7.5 inches tall, 5.5 inches wide. Nobody signed her um, or put a year on her, but based on how she looks, I feel like 60s, giving me vibes. And the person really took time. They they put this this trim all around, as you can see, and they some of it has jewels on it. Really good condition. No no damage except for I think there's just little spot here where the glaze may be missed. Um, the veil is intact. They put um, jewels on the top. So just kind of a fun piece. You know, you could kind of mix her into your Easter. You could mix her into your springtime. Maybe she's not. Maybe she's not a, a, a bridesmaid even, although I think she is because of the uh, the particular bouquet she's got there. But um, just kind of a nice piece to mix in. And they did a nice job on her overall with the uh, the jewels and, and not not a jewel in every spot. I don't know if they fell off in some places or if, if it was done that way. It kind of looked like they more focused on the front when they were doing it. So just looking for $14 for her. I love the application of all this extra on her yeah. because I, I tell you, this mold I've had mm -hmm. a bunch yeah. and usually they're not painted that well. This one's yeah. great, but this one's really elevated. In fact, when I was looking at your preview, I was like, is this like a mold that someone put more ceramic on? But I actually love that they dress her up with some ribbon. And, and this, some this is, this is uh, tacked down. It's not moving. So they, they took, they took the time to do a lot of the details here. And I think she's a Holland mold. 
I think yeah. she's a Holland mole. Yeah, you know, I was looking. It does. It does not say any. Usually, I've seen Holland on, mm-hmm. on various pieces, but this one doesn't say it unless unless she ground it out or something. But it doesn't look. <laughs> like, <laughs> but it doesn't look like we have any interest, so we'll keep things moving along. I like her eyebrows. I do too. Yeah. She's staring into my soul, Brian. I can't. It is. It is. <laughs> There's a bit. There's a bit. Wait, we okay. got Trina. We got Trina. All right, we'll get Very you back much. over here. We'll go ahead. We'll do the countdown. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So we're looking for $15 or the bid end. That's a good point, Kim. Maybe she, maybe someone, maybe a bride made these as a gift for a bride. I, you know, I, I, had that, I had that wondered as well. Like, did, did, did she have a green dress for bridesmaids, you know? Was it was it made to look like they, they were in the wedding? And there's the bit <laughs> end. Thank you, Trina. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. We actually collect these and we actually have a bride and groom. So they did a variation of a bride and groom that were joined together. So I bet you that's what that was, a Good gift. Luck. A wedding gift, a parting gift. All right. $5 choice. And I have choice on some alabaster eggs. They're all in very good condition. They're just not, uh, they're not like the bright pink ones I had the other night. So these are a little more muted. So if you guys like the more muted eggs, they're only going to be $5 choice. So if you guys know these eggs, I think that's a pretty doggone good start price on them. All of them measure three inches, except for the pink one I'm going to show you. So uh, they have a lot of veining in them. Of course, they're probably made in Italy. They do not have their Italy you know, tags on them anymore, but $5 choice. No chips, no cracks. There is your blue one. Uh, I have a purple one. I love the, the different uh, tones here of purple on it. I think it looks like clouds almost. Uh, again, these are ones that you can leave out all year round. These don't just have to be Easter eggs. That's why I kind of brought them because they seem kind of springy. They seem kind of, I see you steal. I see you, Melissa. They Then they can be out all year round. So again, three inches. This one, if y'all do mid-century, I do love the white, the all white. This one just has a little bit of pink in it. I don't know if it sat next to the pink one and a little got over on it. We tried to clean it, but for the most part, this one is just white with a little bit of gray veining in it. So three inches. Uh, again, no issues to these. Uh, Karen Kennedy is the first one in. Patty's in at nine. So then this one is the two and a half. So this one is the pink one. This one reminds me of bubble gum almost, you know, like a piece of bubble gum. This one has a little higher glaze to it than the other three. So we're in at nine. We're looking for 10. So we'll be on choice on either the uh, pink one or the white one or the purple one. And then we'll round out here uh, with the blue one. So let's start a countdown on these. We're at 10, looking for 11. And you can use just in case. Top bidder can take all of them, a variation, and we'll just, we'll just claim them by color. So we're counting down from 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, two, one, bid end. Nikki's in at 11, looking for 12 or more. And again, they're all in very good condition. There's no chips, no impacts, you know, where they have been dropped or anything. Tina had just found these the other day, so we figured we better get them sold because you kind of lose your window once Easter's over. But they're good all year round. There's the bid end. Thank you all so much. So Steele had a just in case of 11. Melissa had a just in case of 14. Karen had a just in case of 20. So for 15, Karen, let me know. Did you want the blue one? Did you want the purple one? Did you want the white one? Or did you want the pink one? I got a feeling I know one of the ones that you might want, Karen, but I'm not too sure. And then Melissa, you'll have backup on whatever's left. And then Steele will have backup after that. But just uh, got you for the pink one, Karen. I had a feeling. So next up is Melissa. Melissa, let me know if you want the white one, the purple one, or the blue one. And we'll just wait a moment here, and then we'll keep it moving. We won't hold it up too long. You got it, Melissa. They're all yours. Thank you so much. All right, Bill. $24, Jason. And I have um, two spectacular pieces of mid-century glass tonight, amethyst glass. 
Uh, I think they're just, just gorgeous. The first one is this really beautiful purple amethyst glass pitcher um, with this really nicely flared top, this gorgeous applied handle with sort of this little ferny kind of um, uh, end here, uh, a beautiful polished bottom. And I did my best to identify the exact maker of this. I sort of have it narrowed down to rainbow, Blanco or Pilgrim, but I'm not sure. And it is in fantastic condition. No chips, no cracks, but typical of mid-century glass. There is one inclusion. There's a bubble right there. But what I did not know about some mid-century amethyst glass, again, this doesn't matter for some of you, but some of you like it, is that it has uranium in it. People check your purple glass because both of the pieces I have tonight, I had no idea. They have they're just full of gorge. I mean, look how look how concentrated that is. It's so, so pretty. Look at the handle. It's yeah. so cool. It's so cool because I think this is like a perfect springtime and summertime color, quite frankly. But if you're someone who loves to have a little bit of purple in your Halloween display and you have a black light on, this could be a whole other cool element that's not just spring and summer. Um, really, really nice. It's really neat. And I just want to show you the bottom because it is a nice smooth bottom, nice smooth pontal on it. So I'm guessing Rainbow Blanco or or um, Pilgrim. I'm not sure, but it is pretty fantastic. Uh, and it's a good size. Let me tell you the size. Um, it is 6.5 inches tall and six inches from handle to spout. So it's a nice size. Really, yeah, it would be great for Halloween. I agree. So pretty. Let me show you one more time. Just this spectacular concentration of uranium in here. It's pretty neat. Oh, and you can actually see that there is an optic as well. Um, so it's paneled, and then the panels are um, twisted ever so slightly to give it that when you turn it, you can see that optic effect, which is pretty neat. And that's typical of mid-century glass. They always try to get some sort of optic effect in them. All right, so we have a bit. I'm going to go ahead and count it down. If anyone else is interested, we're looking for 25 or more. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. And I like that color purple this time of the year for Easter. I yeah, that's, that's why I brought it. Always that's why I brought it. Easter. Yeah, I imagine just putting some cuttings from their flowers when the when the daffodils finally come out or the tulips finally come out. It'd be so beautiful. Thank you for the bid end, Karen. Thank you, Nikki, for your bid. This is yours. Congratulations. $24, Jason. So I've had this fella for quite some time. I was going to bring him back in uh, the holiday season and the fella thought, oh, he's great for spring. So I brought him for spring. I saved him for the sale. Um, he is by a company that I was not familiar familiar with called Sangyo Japan. So he has his original sticker on the back. He is a knee hugger in different shades of blue. Um, he measures, where's my notes? Where are my notes? Where are my notes? There he is. Seven inches tall. So he's, he's a pretty tall one by two and a half inches wide. But these great colors of blue, um, I would say there's some fading on the blue hat too a little bit, but that's sort of like, that's basically the real color on his kind of shirt there. Then he's got a different color blue on the striped part of his shirt. And then those kind of brighter blue, almost turquoise. I mean, they are turquoise in person. They're looking more uh, different kind of blue on screen, but definitely turquoise in person. This is that lighter blue. So if you're seeing this blue right now on screen, that's basically the blue on the shirt, but the legs or the pants he's wearing are definitely kind of that turquoisey color. But I love his expression. Again, like I said, I wasn't familiar with this, this company. I don't know. I think the fellows might know, have, have a little more familiarity than I do on this one. But I thought he's great for spring and then really any time of year. I mean, I love the knee huggers. Obviously, some of them are specifically for seasons. If you get any of the ones for Christmas. But I think you've got license to keep him up out all year long if you want to. Well, they did the Easter Bunny ones. They did Pixies at Easter. I mean, uh, at Christmas time. And he has like a plastic face, right, John? He like does. Yeah. So it's, yeah, it's like a harder. Um, yep. I don't think there's really any give to it, but it, fe it feels like that plastic that would normally have a little bit of a give, um, kind yeah. of like that doll kind of face plastic or doll plastic. Um, but Jeez. I love his funny, silly expression. I, I don't that. know. Eight, like, is this 60s? 
It is. It's a later part of the 60s. It's like that 68 into the early 70s era of. It kind uh, of reminds me of the um, funny face uh, yeah. uh, drink mix. The mug. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's what yep. it reminds me of. Yeah. And he is. Uh, Kim says he's wearing a bucket hat. He's wearing like a Gilligan style hat. He is. Well, he's there, got this right? little like just little buckle thing right uh -huh. here with the hot pink. Um, yeah. I just love his style. He's got a little flower. Yeah. So very kind of like mod in a way with his big you know thing there i see mark in at 24 surprise is, right mark 24 oh my gosh <laughs> so oh, uh so then cool. i see adams in at 25 thank you so much um i've talked about him a little bit so let's get this moving and keep things going in the sale uh so adams are high bid at 25 looking for 26 or more uh, remember we're doing just in case for active bidders just put that jic when i start that countdown 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bid ends. So we're looking for 26 or more. The bid end from Karen Gillette. And everybody and everything had freckles in that era. Do you know what I mean? It was like yeah. clear, clear up through to the, like the early 80s. Everybody had it's freckles. True, yeah. Oh there's Mark's gosh. just in case of 32. And there's a bid in from Karen. So uh, Mark, for 26, this is coming to you. Thank you so much. All right. Hey, All right, Jason, sir. I'm going to be starting at 58. That's one of my okay. higher price items tonight. I am bringing this cat lamp here that we've got here. Okay. Um, un unknown maker. It is 14.5 inches tall, 7 inches wide. It is in very good working condition. It does light up. Um, no issues with the the light mechanism that I can tell. Um, I have not been able to identify who makes this. I've looked, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I've looked over a couple of years time. I finally decided that I was going to bring it to a sale. So I don't know who's ma who makes it. I've never found another one like it, but it, it's in pretty good shape overall. There is one little surface le level chip in the ceramic here. Um, and then interestingly how it was painted, like, I don't know if, it, I don't think it was necessarily intentional. It's under the glaze, but whoever painted it was a little, little loose with the paint, paint brush in a few spots. You can see some blue spots on the back here. So that, that's under the glaze. It's not going to come out just so you know. And then on the, on the ball here, there are a few little, um, like marks uh, as you can see, I did try to get them out and they did not really come out. So just wanted to, to note that for everybody. Those are the, those are the flaws that I see. Um, but for your cat lovers out there, this would work great with all your long neck cats. Um, it, it's just a, it's just a fun piece. I don't think I showed the bottom. Somebody did put, um, like, like that foam, that thin foam. So they put this on more recently, whoever had it, but I have had it for a couple of years um good good shape overall like i said they're just they're just in love as you can so see wales makes a, a cat sculpt just like that two separate cats that are kind of nuzzling up but those look like double the size of the whales ones yeah. those look huge and it, I, I don't think i showed it it has a uh clicker dial uh, for on and off that works fine no issues uh, at the end of the cord. I don't think it has to be rewired. It's just in good shape overall. And Brian, the question about the bulb. The bulb is under the globe, right? The yeah, bulb the bulb is under the bulb is under the globe. This this has like um, I don't I don't want to take it off now, but if you've seen the lights that have like kind of clips on the inside to hold the ball down, yeah, that's that's the style here. So you could actually rotate this a little bit to the back if you wanted to. Um, if if that mark bothered you, you could you could rotate the globe. So again, fantastic. looking for 58. What's that, Jason? Just say it's a fantastic nightlight. Like honestly, yeah. like if you guys are looking for something to set that tone, this would make a fantastic nightlight in, in a room. Very large, as you it's can gorgeous. see. Gorgeous. It's a good size. Never we, saw this before. Never I, I honestly like I've looked I've looked for, for a couple of years and I just finally said, you know what? I'm bringing it. It's been sitting here. Nobody else is enjoying it. Let's see if someone pass it on to somebody else even though I can't identify it. I'm sure it's a maker of some sort. It looks like it was yeah. probably made in Japan, um, I would guess, but but no labels on it. So but, but let's keep things moving, Jens. 
All right. And hello, Virginia. Welcome in. Hello, Tracy. It's so good to see you. Oh, you got, oh, wait, hold on. Hang on here. We'll get you back over here, I Brian. I think that's what always happens. I like to like go to, <laughs> go to move away and Patty. We got gotcha. you. So thank you very much for 58. Thanks so much. We will go ahead. We will do a countdown. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So we are looking for 59 or the bid end. I wonder if some boutique took these cats, got um, them playing, and put out, you know, there were a lot of companies that did that in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. But and these are big. These are big cats. I know. It's, it's, it's yeah. a decent size. Thank you, Patty. This is coming to you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. We actually had a set that big in our collection years ago until one of our cats decided to break it. So, oh, oh. yeah. So I'm just trying to retrieve my last notation. Oh, up, up. It should be coming up right here in a moment. I'm just going to put it in again. My next item is going to start at $28. So give me a minute here. $28, guys. Um, I know this glass has become very popular. It's known by a lot of different names. It seems to always be called end of day glass because a lot of the companies, what they would do is... Uh, the glass blowers at the end of the day, if there were pieces left, they just kind of took the cane, put it all together and made different pieces from it. Um, I believe this is slightly contemporary. They did make this style of speckle or confetti or tutti frutti. It's been called by all those kind of names. They made some of this glass in the turn of the century. OK, I believe this is probably a little more contemporary, probably 80s or 90s. OK, I do not know a manufacturer. It is thicker. It is this gorgeous swirl effect. It is in these greens, which I think this speaks very, very springtime. You can see it's got little pops of uh, pink in there. There's little pops of like a caramel or almost like an amber and then almost like a brown in there. So uh, the person that had this label, they actually called it a love vase. I tried to do some research on that. I'm not sure if it's the uh, pressed in part, if that's what makes it that. Um, but it's in very good condition, and I think this would be great to leave out all year round. I think it would be great now in springtime, you know, at least clear through summer until maybe you swap out some of your decor. Um, again, they call it end-of-day glass. I don't know who manufactured it, but it is a nice quality piece of glass. It measures eight and three-quarters inches tall, which that means it could be a little older. Usually the older glass normally comes in at odd, you know, measurements. I just, I'm not confident enough. It feels quality, but I'm not confident enough to say that. And then it's about three inches at the widest point. So Nikki, I see you in for 28, but let me show you guys up close. This is just a very unique, gorgeous vase. There is a little bit of flint that is trapped in it. Okay. A lot of these pieces, I sold some with Amy during the one Wednesday and it had a ton of it in. Um, I don't know how or why when they do this, it has that. That could mean that it is true end of day, meaning that it was the scraps sitting around. Therefore, as the glass got heated up, it had ash trapped to it. And when they threw all the cane together to make this piece, that's why it has it. So there's your inside. So technically it is cased because the inside is completely white. You can see it is very clean in there. And it's just a gorgeous vase with tons of different colors. It can fit all kinds of decors, and I do love the double effect, and they are kind of offset of one another. So we're in a 28. Do you know how, you know how they uh, sold these kind of vases? Like, did they, were they just at like a company store, or did employees take them home, or how were they marketed? You, or were usually, they? usually anything that end of day, they would do it and take it home to their family. So true, true, true vintage antique end of day glass goes for a premium because it is true one of a kind. They were the glass blowers. They would make them as gifts because they weren't paid a lot. Glass blowers weren't paid a lot at the turn of the century. So they would make them as gifts. Uh, so usually the family had them. They then gained in popularity in the early 20th century, in the early 1900s, to the point where then the factory started making them. So I hope that kind of answers the evolution of, you know, when you find early pieces and you see them in an antique mall and someone's asking two, 300, it's because they can pinpoint when it was made, how it was made. And they know it's one of a kind, but then the companies cashed in on it. They said, hey, Wilbur's family loves them so much. Let's start making them with all the pieces left over. Ergo, that's why we have end of day 
vases. So this one probably is not technically an end of day, but they did it in the same fashion. So sorry, I'm talking too much, but thank you. No, for I appreciate that. I, I was genuinely curious because I had not really thought about it before until you were started, started to describe it a little bit. The companies realized that the scraps were kind of worth something. So they figured, hey, let's start making the vases. So, all right, Nikki, you got it at 28. We're looking for 29 or more. If anyone's interested, please put a bid in. Let's count it down from 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. If you guys really want to collect end of day glass and see some good things, it's the paperweights. The paperweights command uh, good money, especially if they made them into flowers and things. That was a big deal that they would turn them into big, huge uh, paperweights with flowers on the inside. All right, Nikki, it's yours. Thank you so much. Congratulations. All right, Bill. $14, Jason. And I have a couple of rounds of wall art today. Because again, I'm in the spring mood. And whenever I think spring, I think tulips. And of course, they come from the Netherlands. So this is a beautiful embroidered. Um, it's pro it's a framed linen. So it's probably, and it has this detail at the bottom. It's probably either a table runner, a small tablecloth, or maybe, um, maybe a hand towel. But it is super, super cool. It's of this lady out in the tulip field. She's picking the tulips. The bottom is also embroidered, uh, so the detail is embroidered, and she has got this windmill in the distance. It's really, really pretty. Um, it's nicely matted and framed. It's in great condition on the back with a hanger, and the piece itself is 14.5 inches tall and 11.5 inches, um, and I'm actually going to pair it, uh, and th these will come with it with this sweet little set of salt and pepper shakers. Uh, these little, this little Dutch boy and little Dutch girl, if you saw my promo, you saw them sort of in front of one another. Um, salt and pepper shakers in the wooden boots with the red tulips on it. I think they just look super together. If you were to lean this up against a surface, this, this uh, embroidery up against a surface, put these in front of it. They're super, super cute. They still have their rubber stoppers. So they're old ones. I don't know the manufacturer, but it looks like the, um, it looks like the sticker was one of the diamond stickers and the only condition issues on either of the shakers. This is what she looks like from the front. She has two tiny nicks in her paint here and here around the back. But other than that, the, the shakers are in great condition. They're super cute. And they are paired with this gorgeous framed embroidered table linen, side table linen. I'm not sure. I, if someone is really curious, I'm sure you could open it up and see what else is in here. It's actually thick. So I know that it's probably still the entire linen that's there. It wasn't like a, something that they cut out. It's linen is folded behind it. You can tell. Anyway, so um, this is for everything that you see here. So I'm going to go ahead and start a countdown. If anyone else is interested, now is the time to get in. Uh, we're looking for 16 or more. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. Of course, I'm the one who said we're going to start from 20, and I keep forgetting to start from 20. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't going to correct you, Bill. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll get it soon. <laughs> yeah, I think that they look really cool, like displayed like this. Yeah, when doing the previews, it's always like, oh, these things really need to stay together. Yeah, yeah, they're really cute. There is the bid end. I thought maybe our chat had frozen. So Molly, congratulations. This is yours. This set is yours for $15. Thank you. Jason, I have a choice round starting at $14. Um, so these are going to start at 14. I want to take you through some of the my sort of minorish condition issues on these. I have some Royal Hager um, vases. So they're both the horn of plenty cornucopia design. Um, there are, there are some things to take you through. So on the blue ones, I have a blue one. This is the blue one. Um, it has a little bit of a 
a little like chip right there. It's not really a chip, it's like a little ding right there. You can kind of see it. And then the one thing really to notice, and I talked to Bill about this earlier today, there is kind of this vein that runs here and then kind of runs underneath. You can see some brown kind of spotting right there. He says that's unusual, and Bill can jump in if he wants to. Um, unusual for Hager, which is a pretty great pottery. Um, he thinks maybe some combination of water and cold temperatures did that. So I don't know that this is useful as a vase vase, but for decorative purposes, I think it's great. Um, there also is a little bit of a kind of a little ding right there. Um, but when it's displayed, you won't really notice that as much. Like it's not, there's nothing else to really point out on that one, but just know that with this Royal Hager piece. Um, these are both marked R332A. Um, they're both seven and a quarter inches tall by three and a quarter inches in width. So that's your first choice, the kind of sky blue um, cornucopia uh, horn of plenty. And just to, just to say, those three dots on the bottom are not unusual. It's just that those are where it rested on the kiln. Right. I'm, I guess what I was pointing out is that the, thank you for that. Just that they also have that same kind of coloring from yeah, the yeah, vein. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then the other one is this mixed blue and pink, um, sort of a lighter blue. And then the pink, um, this one, let's see, there's something, I don't think there's anything on the top, but just on the bottom, there's a little bit of a ding there, a chip there. And then there's a chip here. This is the most, uh, kind of obvious one but other than that when they're displayed the little bits of chip that are on the bottom those are on the bottom so when it's displayed on the shelf that's not really noticeable but i thought they're just a great striking little piece great for spring um for decorative purposes i think even like as a quasi kind of bookend thing maybe you don't use them as bookends but you use them to frame something on either end is really nice if you wanted both of them i think a single options are great too but um, I don't come across uh, pottery very often, but just because of the design and especially because of the color and the time of year, I thought these were worth saying even with those little bit of issues. So Patty, I see you at 14, looking for 15 or more. Uh, starting from 20, get your best bids in uh, if you are interested in bidding. And then uh, we are, with just in case is in effect. Karen, I see you at 15. So now we'd be looking for 16 or more. Remember, just in case is in effect for active bidder. So you need to have a bid in first before you use JIC. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bid end. So we're looking for 16 or more of the bid end from Karen Gillette. Yeah, I noticed that too, Karen. Bill, that's why it was so delayed on a bid end. It even started to spin. There's an internet blip going on here a bad lag well i think we got through it we're on the other end now but that was pretty odd karen i see you're just in case of 25 then i see patty roses just in case of 25 uh there's a bit in from karen patty your 27 came in after the bit in so for let me do the math here karen didn't need her just in case because she came in first at just in case so karen for 15 let me know if you want the blue and pink one or just the blue one and i will watch the comments Am no I way, wrong? John. Karen gets it for 25 because Patty's just in case made oh. it 25. Yep. Oh, okay. Because Patty was bidding that, 25. This, that scenario has never happened to me where people yep. have the same just in case. Yep. Good to know. Sorry. Good. So my bad. So Karen, 25, right? You let me know yes. if you want blue and pink or blue. And Apologies then the other that. one would go to Patty for 25 then if she wanted it. In all yeah. of the times I've ever, that has never happened to me. I know, but it proves the power of the just in case because True. it can make or break if you really want something. All righty, sir. All right. I'm starting at $30 okay. and I have a small glass bowl uh, that is Mount Washington quilted rose bowl. It is cased glass. Um, and my research says this is anywhere from the 1890s to the 1950s. I know that's quite a wide range, but uh, this particular piece seemed to have been made during that time. It's in really good condition. No chips, cracks, damage to it. Um, again, it is cased glass. Um, you could see the kind of the layer of white uh, on the inside when you look at the, at the top here. Uh, the bottom, it has this like lighter, lighter piece of glass where, where the ponto is, was. Um, I've seen several that were like that, so it seems to be that's how those in particular came out when they were made. Um, and I don't know if it's really showing too well, but it also has an iridescent quality in the folds here. I'm not really sure if that's coming through, but that is that is part of the glass um, as well. 
it's a really good good condition overall i don't know if i gave the measurements it is about three inches tall and 3.25 inches wide this is gorgeous this yeah. is gorgeous like a, it's like a cranberry pinkish color if mm -hmm. depending on how it's coming through on your end but to me the color is like a cranberry-ish color and not a so cranberry but a lighter it's so quality it almost feels and looks like a puffy quilt do you know what it, i mean yeah like, it, they, they do say it is a quilted rose yep. they did such a good yeah. job with this to me, I initially thought maybe it was Fenton when I first got it because it just kind of had that feel to me, but it is Mount Washington, according to my research. And these are not easy to find. We were just fortunate to find a picture in this pattern and you cannot, you don't find this that yeah, often. It is, it is not, it is not common. There's the box. Gorgeous. Again, that like clear glass that seems to be common from what mm -hmm. I can tell um, yeah. this particular piece. I don't know if that means... I don't know, maybe you guys know, does that mean it's actually a little bit older by chance because it's, it is clearer in that respect? I think from the Ponto, I think it is a little bit older. I think it hinges not so much at 50s, but I think it's that earlier, earlier part of the time frame yeah. you gave. Again, I, I don't think I mentioned it, but you could kind of see on the inside where the, the white casing also has, I, I don't know, inside Ponto, maybe I'll call it. I'm not really sure, <laughs> to be honest. But no, that's very, definitely nice quality. iridescence all through here. Gorgeous. Again, three inches, but I say it was three inches tall, 3.25 inches wide. But we can keep things moving along and I'll bring it back at the recap. All right. I'm just going to wait a minute to see if anybody pops in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that would make a good votive holder. You know, you could probably, right, yeah. if you had a power, if your uh, tea light was powerful yeah. enough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I thought the guest good. bathroom would be great. Yeah, really good. Well, guys, make sure you stick around because afterwards we will have a recap. So if anybody wants to think about it, it'll be coming back. $24, guys. And I know I got to have some mushroom lovers. And you're getting this. I made a little I made a little thing here. So, But the main uh, focal point are the pastel mushrooms. I do believe this could be a hobbyist. I couldn't find this with Google Lens. Um, I just think it's really neat, really different. It is a planter. It is two-sided. Um, if it is a hobbyist, they did a really good job. It has a, a satin finish to it, and it's just this gorgeous little planter. So I did pop some grass in it and some plastic eggs. If you don't want it, I won't send it with it, but it will go with it if you want it. So um, I kind of followed with Bill. We kind of thought a lot alike, thinking spring, thinking you know, Easter kind of color. So I thought, how great would this be for you to, you know, use, you know, pot some of your plants in it. You know, if you guys collect the Mary mushroom, you don't see a lot of the mushrooms when they're in pastel colors. So, you know, we do have the uh, very buttery yellow, we have pink, we have the green, and then we have the um, lavender. And it does repeat over on this side. And the measurements on it are three and a half inches tall, by five inches wide. So the eggs are just contemporary newer plastic eggs. So let me take them out here and I'll show you guys the inside. Dump the grass out. It's in really good condition. They actually glazed the inside. So it would be great to actually pot plants in. Uh, Melissa, it measures about three and a half inches tall. So just about three and a half to four inches tall. And then it measures about five inches across. So it's going to hold a decent sized uh potted plant, uh, but it's not going to be the largest one in your um, in your garden if you guys use it. So unless I see you for 24, you can see when I tilt it, the inside is glazed. The outside is not, but it has kind of a, um, it, it is, if you can feel that they did coat it, but it's not like a thick glaze, it has a coating on it. And then I love the gold details of the ferns in the background. Um, I just think it's a really neat piece. Again, looking at the bottom, you see that it says CC on it. I believe it's a hobbyist, but I have not been able to find another version of this mold anywhere. So, but again, you are going to get the uh, grass in it because I thought it looked good in it. And then I am going to throw in the three plastic eggs. And again, they're just your new contemporary style eggs because I thought it kind of looked like a little... Uh, Easter basket together. So let's count it down. Melissa's got the top bit at 24. So we're looking for 25 or more. No chips, no cracks. If anyone's interested, here we go. 20, 19, 18, 17, 
16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. Hello, Heidi. Good to see you. Welcome in, everybody. Thank you for hanging out with us tonight. And like Bill said, spending some of your Friday evening with us. We're very privileged and honored that you guys are here. There is our bid end. Thank you, Karen G. So, Melissa, congratulations. It's going to you. All right, Bill. Um, $25, my only choice round tonight, Jason. Okay. Um, and I have my pottery for the evening. We are going to look at some gorgeous hull. Uh, you can kind of see it. And the two pieces I have tonight are really interesting um, historically. So these are 1950s hull planters, or they, they hull would call them planting dishes because uh, they tend to be longer and not as tall. And the two that I have tonight are from what Hall calls their novelty line. And basically what that means is these molds were sort of generic molds and they were used for lots of different patterns, depending on the, um, depending on the paint treatment. Um, so this could have been found in the woodland line. It could have been found in the um, parchment and pine line. Um, but because this one is pink on the outside with the blue on the inside, this one was meant to pair with my favorite hull line, which is the ebb tide line. Um, and that's the, sort of the underwater uh, scheme of hull. So this is the leaf pattern um, and it is in fantastic condition. Uh, there is one, and it is so tiny. There is one tiny, tiny chip right here, right there. Um, but the chip is still even blue, so it's not even that deep. Um, it's fantastic. So, and both of the ones that I have today are big. This leaf planter, which is planter number 78, um, is 3.5 inches tall, but it's 13 inches long. And it's just gorgeous. I mean, you could even make a little pond out of this. You could put some water in here and float your... Um, uh, just the tops of your flowers in here on the surface. That would look really, really pretty. Put a little goldfish underneath it. The second one I have is also one of the novelty pieces from the novelty line of Hall, which could also be found in woodland, parchment, and pine. But again, because of the coloring of this one, uh, the pink on the outside and the blue on the inside, we know this one was meant to pair with ebb tide, um, which is, again, like I said, that amazing underwater line. Um, this is about the same size as the other one. This one is planter number uh, 20, 71, and it's 4.5 inches uh, tall and 13 inches long. So these are nice long planters, and they can be used for lots of other things other than plants on your bucket. Jelly beans. Table, jelly jelly beans. beans. I they like can them. It can hold your plastic picnic utensils. Yep. You could put breadsticks in it. You could put the crackers in it next to all of the dips. Lots of different options, but just literally the gorgeous and subtle, um, the subtle pottery on here. So, so Bill, those are so great to put in a windowsill if you have a deep windowsill. Yeah. And I like to use these. You keep talking about the ebb tides, like if you have a mermaid bathroom. Yeah. These look so great on actually the, the back of the toilet tank. You can actually put things in it then. Like if you have guests coming over, that can be where you put their little toiletries, their little shampoos and stuff. Yep, hairbrushes. And yep, you're right, Heidi. All those great things. I love them for that size. Don't yeah, they're super, they're they're super pretty. Great colors. Yeah. And I have these in the uh, in some of the other colors too that would match with the other um, the other patterns. Like the parchment and pine is a deep green and a parchment color. It's actually parchment color. And then the woodland okay. one is is like a maroon and a very deep deep green. So really really pretty. Um, but right now there doesn't seem to be any interest. So we're going to move it along and bring these back at the recap um, so that John can show us what amazingness he has next. And Karen um, said you had her breadsticks. This is going to start at $12. Now Got for it. something completely different. I love some vintage <laughs> advertising and I love some, <laughs> some pitchy candy things. And this is a yep. vintage uh, new old stock candy box from a company called Frank Horning, which I'm not familiar with at all. This isn't marked Frank Horning at all. I just did some research. It just has catalog number 25 on the bottom. But I love the kitschy little bunny who's painting the eggs. Happy Easter. It's a cute little house. Very cartoony, really bright colors. Bunnies all around in every kind of window. 
Um, overall, the size on this is six and three quarters inches long by four and three quarters inches high, and it's about two and a quarter inches in depth. But again, I love um, using and mixing things in displays. I think this would be a great base for any sort of display because of the um, images on the front and back. You can actually put it as a part of a centerpiece, and there's still stuff happening on every side. So it's not one of those things where it's best against a wall or a you know a cabinet or something. You can definitely use it where guests or you yourself can see it all the way around. But again, the colors on this are really bright. Uh, again, uh, new old stock, so unused. So if you got this, it would be shipped flat. Um, I just put it together so you could kind of see how it looks when it's assembled. Oh, that door, that door on that house, because this could start at Valentine's Day and go straight right? through your Easter. Yeah, yeah, it's just really well done. And I love his expression or their expression. I love the little lantern hanging from the tree right there. And the bunnies in the windows crack me up too. Oh my gosh. And every that time I see these- watering the bushes out there. That one just saying hello <laughs> behind and that one's, uh, very proud of the egg that he painted, I guess. They are. And every time I see these, John, they're always bent or they're torn or they have a stain. Yeah, so, I mean, I will say like there's there's minor, minor condition issues. I have I have a couple of these. Um, this one, it looks, you know, the one I put together, I think looks pretty good. But um, I know that just from the set that I got, there's like might be a little bit of spotting or the way they, because this is two pieces they glued together. Sometimes right. they're not as like, they're a little bit off, just slightly wow. off, but that's just, you know, again, nothing that anyone thought what they were going to save or right. for whatever reason, they didn't put these all in production. And that's just how they, you know, made them and who cared at the time, but a uh, $12 start. I don't see any interest on this. This will come back in the recap over to you, Brian. Okay. Starting bit of 25, Jason. Okay. I have this springtime lady head base by Lefton. She's in very good shape overall. The one condition issue uh, is on a flower here in the front. It does seem to be chipped. Um, it's, sometimes it's very hard to tell with these flowers that are this type of style, but I believe that there's a chip off the top tip of this leaf right there. Uh, other issue to note, um, I don't know if you can see it. There's like these three little notches in her hat. That's a manufacturing flaw or intended. It's not it's not chips. I felt them like so many times. I kept thinking like those look like they're chips, but they're they're definitely glazed over. So that is is if they are flaws, it's from the manufacturing. But otherwise, uh, pretty good shape overall. Good condition. She is missing her her sticker on the bottom. It is number one three four three B. She got her big hat. She is ready for the spring. She's ready for Easter. I believe all of the flowers on the hat are intact. I'm not noticing any damage on those. Um, I don't think I gave measurements and she is 5.5 inches tall. No, no jewelry, but she was not made with jewelry. I know a lot of times they were made with jewelry. This one in particular did not come with, with actual jewelry. So looking for, thank you, excuse me, for your $25 bid. We're looking for 26 or more. Uh, her fingers are intact. Sometimes the fingers are broken. As you can see, they're all intact there and in good shape. Just very good overall, minus the, the chip on the front here. It isn't it isn't noticeable too much, um, again, with the style of the flowers, but but it, it, it is there. I can feel it's a little bit sharper than the typical edges of the others. I swear I can hear her with her hand going like, glory be. Like, <laughs> like I can hear her almost yeah. like... Coming out of like Sunday mass, like it's, oh yeah, she's whoever good. Sits, whoever sits behind her is not seeing nope. anything in front of them because the, the hat is is quite yeah. large and in charge there. <laughs> Absolutely. It's and if you- 26 or more. If you were delicate with it, like you could use her to hang like some of your maybe bracelets on her hand. You know, if you were delicate you with could. it, you could use it for all sorts of different things. I don't think I would be that brave, but you, you, you could definitely do that. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Lori B. I can hear her coming. I can hear her just saying it. Yeah. yeah. Fanning herself. Maybe she dropped her fan. Maybe they said something kind of seedy in church. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she, it's, it's a, excuse me, very bright blue. So it's that definitely like a springtime blue. She probably does look like, to me, she looks like she's going to Easter, Easter she Sunday does. mass yeah. or something similar. So since we've got a bid, let's go ahead and we will get the countdown started. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 
nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. So looking for 26 where the bid end. Yeah, anytime you find these, usually all the flowers are gone, the whole yeah. hand's been. The fingers are definitely, usually like one of the fingers has been lopped off. Gone. I think we have a bid end, so thank you so much, Steel Whisper. This is coming to you. All right, congratulations, Steel. And guys, thank you so much for hanging out with us. If you are not following everybody on the screen, we made it really easy. We put all the links to their Instagram and their YouTube channels down below. If you're watching this on a replay, please, please make sure you give all these gentlemen a follow. It helps us all grow our small business. I have a lot of designer stuff tonight, so it's going to be $20 choice, and I have some pottery made by Steubenville, but it was created by an industrial designer named uh, good old uh, Russell Wright. So um, I don't often find the pottery to offer. Um, a lot of this pottery was used. So when you find it, you can tell it was used. It's normally chipped and damaged. But I have two identical in two different colors. Uh, they call these their teapots. And I kind of think with uh, spring coming on, you could make tea for one, tea for two, take it out on your lanai, take it out on your screened in porch and enjoy them. Now, this is reading true to color. They call this coral pink. And it has these speckles on it, which vary 1950s, you know, feel to it. The pottery actually started uh, being produced in the late 30s through the late 50s. So $20 choice. There's absolutely no damage. Here is the lid. So it has the little lip in there, the little safety lid. And this is your first choice. They're usually all, there's maybe one or two pieces in the line that don't, but they're usually all signed by Russell Wright. And Steubenville is the pottery company out of Steubenville, Ohio. So um, they, they both measure, I'll give you the measurements, but you can choose between the pink or the uh, gray one. They're about eight inches wide, about eight inches wide by about four inches tall. So if you guys love like the mod, the mid-century kind of look, if you guys are decorating in that 1950s feel, these are gorgeous pieces. And they don't come to live sales all that often. So that was your pink one. And here in the identical pattern is the gray one. And again, we have the speckling on it, which I love that on pottery pieces. It has the safety lip. Actually, if you guys bought both of these, you could interchange the lids on them. If you wanted to, you know, make your own Franken set, you could do that. You could interchange the lids. So this one is stamped Russell Wright, Steubenville Pottery. Again, it is the same exact dimensions as the one I showed you. There is no damage here to the mouth at all. You know, Bill speaks a lot to these uh, teapots. They're good to water your plants. If you guys have a mid-century home and you want to, you can fill this with water, use it to water your plants. I think it would hold a decent amount of water. So um, again, it is uh, Russell Wright was an industrial designer. He did a lot of, you know, industrial things, but then him and his wife also dabbled in the design of dinnerware. So James, thank you. I see you're 20. And this is pretty, and they do a chartreuse. Uh, they do a dark emerald green. They do the uh, gray and they do the pink. And I think there's another color, but I'm drawing a blank right Isn't now. Like a, is there a maroonish color? I think you're right. I think there is a maroonish color. And right now it seems to be that chartreuse. And, and throughout the years of me reselling this at the store, these colors, they come and go in popularity but right now the chartreuse seems to be the color that everybody wants. So I would say if you guys want to collect this, now would be the time to start collecting some of these grays or some of these, they call this a coral pink, but they're very, very mid-century. They're in very good condition. And I love the design of these, even if you just use them as decor, you know, took the lids off and use them as little vases or planters. Um, I just think they're gorgeous. Just sit this on your, you know, it doesn't have to be a teak mid-century hutch. It could definitely be like a modern one. You know, if you're a minimalist, you know, if you like all the clean lines, these are little pieces of art. So, Patty, I see you in at 21. Again, it's going to be choice, identical teapots. I like to call these the one-serve teapots. You could even put some coffee in these if you want, uh, but they're identical. You either take the pink or you can take the gray, but I thought they kind of looked good together because I like the balance. So if I'm going to do it, I have two, one on either side. So let's count it down. 22 or more. We are doing just in case for active bidders. So 22 or more from 20, 19, 18, 
17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. Sometimes these, you find they're very, very heavily crazed and stained. These are both in very good, very good condition. Words are tough. James, I see you're 24, so we're looking for 25 or more. And you can pick either the gray or the pink, which they call the coral pink. So it kind of looks pink in one light, coral in the other. So James, congratulations. I think you're a new buyer to me, so welcome. And thank you for purchasing from other Tuckers. James, you get first choice at 24 if you want the pink or the gray, and you can take both. And if you can just email me all your information, we will be invoicing tomorrow. So James, just let me know if you want the pink one or the gray one, and you can take both if you want. You got the gray one, James. Congratulations. That one is yours. That means back up. So James at 24, Patty at 21, if you wanted the pink one, it could be yours. And I'll watch the chat. I was Thank just going to say, if anybody's local to New York area, if you go to visit the, the Russell, Russell Wright House yes. in Manitoba, that's a really great outdoor, outdoor indoor excursion for a day. It is. So just to add a little bit to the conversation, uh, some cats hate garlic and peppermint. Other cats love them. The one chemical that I found works is, you know, that stuff that humans use on their nails to stop biting their nails. If you just get a little bit of that and put it on the edge of the plant, don't cover the plant because it'll kill the plant. But if you put the edge on the leaves of that nail biting stuff, uh, cats will learn to stay away from your plants over time. All right, so I have some French porcelain. I'm excited for this one. Um, $16, Jason. Mm -hmm. I have some Limoges by George Boyer. Um, and it is in the form of this gorgeous Alice in Wonderland plate. Um, it is a collector's plate. Uh, artist Sandy Nightingale, Nightingale, 1981, from a series of, I believe, eight. I think I've seen eight of these um, Alice in Wonderland plates. But I love this one for this time of the year because it's Alice in the White Rabbit. I just think it's so, so perfect. Um, lots of information. You need to read French in order to understand it. But it does have this great hanger that comes on it. Um, and basically what it says is this is, uh, it says, um, Alice is in the country with the white rabbit. That's what it says. Oh, um, and uh, it is seven, 8.5 inches from side to side. So it's super, super nice. But it also, um, as I said, does have the hanger and it has all of its credentials. It has the original box that it would come in. And on the inside of the box is a lot of stuff. The original certificate of authenticity with its actual number. It's a numbered piece. This is number 744. Again, it is all in um, it is all in French. Luckily, I read French. And one of the things that it says is that uh, this is for 24 karat gold. 24? Let me look. Yeah, this is 24 karat gold on the outline of the plate. Um, in addition to the certificate. There is a little story about the white rabbit, including one example of one of the other plates, which is Alice and the Caterpillar, which is super cool as well. Um, then there is the original um, the original booklet that came with it. It's multi-pages. Um, and then there is this little insert that says, uh, if it breaks, let us know, we'll replace it, essentially. I, I think that's probably null and void at this point, but. It's like Tupperware. Patty, it's that's hilarious. Idea. Jason, you need to read Patty's. Uh, I did. I just told her, no, I didn't. No, I don't know. I don't know anything that y'all are talking about. So that plate's like Tupperware. If it breaks, you send it back to the factory and they'll send you a new <laughs> one, right? Isn't that cool? I think this is so beautiful. Even if, you know, you could pop it into an Easter display or if you love fairy tales <laughs> or you have someone to gift it to. Um, it's just a really, really pretty, very well done um, it's even got these little woodpeckers. There's one down by the river and then one up sort of in the in the tree, this willow tree along the river. Just so, so whimsical with the, the bulrushes or the what cattails here. So it's nice, fun. It's a nice rendering of Alice. She's not she's not quite blonde either. Right. Yeah. And, she, you know, she's she's length, lengthy. Mm -hmm. You know, she's you know, she, she's a young woman in this, I think, here. 
um, not so much child, which I really like. I like that sort of depiction. Um, and then some beautiful foxglove, because of course I look at the flowers. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start a countdown. Thanks everyone for your bids. Um, active bidders can use a just in case. And that's how big it is. 8.5 inches from side to side. Um, 20, I remembered this time, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. Do you know when this plate's from, Bill? Did you say the 1981, yep, 1981. Okay. So thank you for the bid. And Karen, Dusty, it looks like it is yours for $21. Congratulations and thank you. Jason, uh, $32. I have a pretty special Joseph's original uh, figurine. This is uh, Gail from the Garden Party series. Um, this measures a five and a quarter inches high by four and a quarter inches wide. It has her name and a sticker on the bottom. Someone put these little felt pads to protect it. And then it also says number 240. And then it's that signature Joseph's Originals on the bottom. There is some uh, crazing, a little bit of crazing overall. Um, the thing to know about this, these are among the older pieces from Joseph's Original when they were in California. This is by an artist, uh, Muriel Joseph George, who made this series for them. She does have a sister piece in that series. Uh, so Gail's in pink with the blue highlighting, as you can see. And then Cleo is in uh, uh, blue with pink highlighting. So they're kind of a match set. You don't see them together all that often, um, but just know that there's another one in this series. Just really gorgeous. If you saw my preview for the sale, she was paired with those Royal Hager vases because I just love the color combination of those two pieces. But then also just this time of year, thinking Easter, uh, et cetera. But, um, Condition and just note, there's a little bit of a like a chip right there, right in the front of that petal. And then the tiniest one to the one to the left, that one's really not noticeable because of where it falls, but that's that one on the front is the most noticeable. But other than that and the crazing, which again, not terribly unusual, um, that's the only th really thing to note on her. Other than that, all of this detail is in great condition. There is a lot of detail on this piece. There's all that gold finish on the, on the highlighting on kind of the spaghetti pieces and the kind of, uh, I don't know, tassels or the sort of braiding of her dress. But just a really sweet, again, a different kind of uh, series from Joseph's Originals that you may not have seen uh, before or often at least. Gosh, I love her. And she would be so good in your Easter displays with that huge. I always, I don't know, John, even with that grading, don't you always think Victorian at Easter time for some reason? Yeah, I, you know, I have actually have um, some great, because uh, uh, it seemed to be like an air. I don't know why, but like some of the uh, cookie tins or candy tins mm -hmm. also yeah. sort of harken back to that era. And those yeah. would be great paired with these. So, yeah, I'm always thinking and these two colors. I mean, I know typically we see yeah. some of these in kind of nursery things. Um, but for this time of year, I think paired with lots of things you can find that may not have been intentionally done for spring or Easter, but really work really nicely together. I think she looks like cotton candy. Mm. She does. I the love, I mean, when you see the sister of her too, like mm -hmm. they really do. And I don't, I don't know if there are other in the series. I only know of those two. Um, I can't say for sure if there are others or not, but I think those are, I do think those are the only two. Quality Vintage Ohio is unit 32, looking for 33 or more. Again, we're doing just in case for active bidder. So if you want to get a bid in there before I start the countdown so that you can use that, please do. I'm going to start that bid, that countdown right now. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. So we're looking for 33 or more, the bid end from Karen Gillette. Gosh, and she's a she's a larger sized one than the ones we normally see. Correct, yeah. And that's why I'm saying it's like for me, and I think the, you know, because of the earlier era, yeah, for sure. It's, a, it's bigger than the one we typically see. So Quality Vintage Ohio, thank you so much. This is coming to you for 32. Over to you, Brian. Uh, starting bit is going to be 40, Jason. Okay. And I'm bringing a uranium glass fan vase that I believe is Fenton. And if uh, Reg just gives me a second, so I'll turn off the light here to show you. It does glow. Hopefully, it will start. You can kind of see 
It definitely has a lot of glow to it. Very, very bright. So we're looking for $40. It is 6.5 inches wide, seven inches tall. There is no damage to it. It does have a few bubbles in it. Um, give me one second, turn the light back on here. A few bubbles from the manufacturing. I'm not sure they're coming through totally here. Um, very good condition though, like I said, no damage. The inside is, is um, I call it like beveled or has texture to it, which gives it the, the fan-like appearance on both sides. And it's both sides of the glass have that texture to it. So it's not just one-sided, uh, very good shape overall. It really just glows bright. Um, it even glows brighter in person than when it was appearing when I was just showing it. Um, no damage, no chips, uh, very, very smooth all around. No cloudiness that I see. So again, and just in good shape. Um, seven inches tall. So it's, it's decent size, great for flowers. Um, smaller bouquet, it's narrow opening. So you can't, can't jam a lot in there obviously, but it's not made, it's made for, for minimal. Uh, it's made for fullness. Those are, those are very right. They're great. Yeah. Thank these you, these fan bases, I love to put ephemera in them. If you stagger it right, you can fan out some different postcards and things in these I've seen people do. I know that we're supposed to use them all for flowers, Bill, but <laughs> I like to use these for other things as well. Plus, they're good utilitarian, like, like we were saying, makeup brushes, all kinds of different things that you could pop in there if they're long enough. Breadsticks. The breadsticks. I'm here for breadsticks the breadsticks. Yep. <laughs> yeah, some Pizza Hut breadsticks would fit in there just nice. Just oh, why'd you say Pizza Hut? Because <laughs> I know your weakness, Bill. Fill that halfway with marinara, and then you can dip your breadsticks in it. Oh, there you yeah. Go. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I do like Pizza Hut breadsticks. Those are really yeah. good. Yeah, they are good. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ryan, remember that Pizza Hut that was by the Price Chopper? Yes. On the road from where you live? Oh, I used to go there all the time. Yeah, yeah. It, that, that was a good one. It was a good one. If we all but, lived closer after the sale, we could all meet up and go get yes, bread sir. sticks at Pizza Hut. Yeah. <laughs> in New Jersey, all the all the restaurants closed. You can only get takeout. Uh, yeah, they did that here too. Yeah, that is true. It doesn't seem like we have interest, so we'll keep it moving. I'll bring it back at the at the recap. All right, guys. My next item. I'm taking a chance. I'm taking a chance. It is uh, Danish. It is designer. You're going to get the whole set because they've sold them in odd number sets. And this is going to take somebody who's a real mid-century collector. And if nobody wants it, that's okay. So I will run through this as quickly as I can. I have a set of five of these Denmark tulip candlestick holders. They are not the early 60 ones. The early 60 ones usually in my research have a paper label on the bottom. Okay. These are the later ones that are stamped. Not any less valuable. They're just not the early 60 ones. They were very prone to paint chips. There is almost zero to none. There is one or two little, but they're at good spots. So you're going to get all five for that money. So uh, you're going to get two of the larger ones. Okay. And I want to pronounce the name properly. It's Lon Borg is the designer and his first name is Low Rides. I think I'm saying that right. Pro probably not pronouncing it properly with the, the flair, uh, but he was a designer and designed a lot of mid-century pieces a lot of home decor. Uh, he's almost like the cornerstone of, you know, some of the uh, Danish mid-century. So you're going to get all five of these tulip uh, candlestick holders in these pastel colors. And if you look them up online, you'll see what they sell for in sets of five. And they do come in different colors, but you're going to be hard pressed to find these blues and, and pinks. So you're going to get two of them at the largest height and the largest height on these two are 11 inches tall. So they are 11 inches tall. They are like a teak wood that are painted. Then you have a metal insert, and then the stem is metal. They're all in very good condition. One of the blue ones, and I'll show you, has a little speck of paint where the stem goes in that's missing. So 125, and you will get all five of them for that money. Here's your bubblegum pink one in very good condition. You know, a lot of times the paint on these completely starts to crack and flake off. I figured with spring and Easter, you don't have to use these as candlestick holders. They kind of just do their own thing. I know a lot of folks just use them for that. 
The gray one you can see right there where it meets has a little tiny speck of paint missing. So you'll get this one. This is your next size going down. And this one measures 10 inches tall. So you get the whole set. You can do whatever you want with them. You can use all five. You can just use one or two. And then the last two are the same exact size. They come in at eight and a half inches tall. Now, I have spent days trying to research this exact mark to tell you guys exactly when these were made. These are not 60s. These are a little later. When later, I can't tell you because I can't find any other information on them. I can tell you that I can find a ton of different uh, auctions that have offered them and sold them, you know, throughout the years. But nobody says like, like they reissued these in the 2000s or they reissued these in the 90s. I couldn't find any of that information. So the only thing I can tell you is these are authentic because they are stamped on the bottom. So they are authentic, you know, from Denmark. They are, don't know if they're the revival. The original would have a paper label on the bottom. Okay. So I will tell you full transparency. They're not the early 1960s, the mid 60s ones. Uh, but nonetheless, the mid-century folks that, you know, decorate with it, they still consider these to be just as good as the 1960 ones. So the metal has no pitting, no rusting, no scratches, and it's kind of a matte enameled paint that they have on it. So again, you're going to get all five of them for the 125. I didn't want to break them up. And when I realized that they were sold in sets of five, I figured I might have a set here. So um, there is your gray one. I thought there was a blue one that had a speck of paint missing. Let me guess. So that is the small one. That's the other bit of paint condition issue right there. So do any of you fellows decorate with these? Brian, do you have any of these in your mid-century? I actually don't have any of them, but when I saw them in your, excuse me, in your reel, I was like, wow, those are pretty unique and, and different. They are. The only thing that I can tell you guys is, is that they're not selling today. I can't find them right here, right now. Any chance that, yes, I can. I can try. I can try, Laura. How are you? It's good to see you. I can try. I can try to at least show you three of them together. They look because, great, Laura. They look great in his preview over on Instagram altogether. Yes. They look really stunning. Actually, you know what? Should I? I guess maybe you know. Maybe I'll pull that picture up and show it. Show it to you with the picture while we're here. Just give me a second. I can show it to you that way, and you're gonna get them all because they are a little top heavy. So if I go showing them on a, um, if I go showing them on my sheet. I don't want them to fall. So you can arrange them however you want. And if you guys want to, they kind of stagger them, you know, and a lot of them, the, the, the groupings of five that I have seen, a lot of them are the same exact height. So a lot of them are the same exact height. So again, I, I figured it might take a certain individual. I know $125 is a lot, but remember you are going to get all five of them. So um, I'm going to move it over to Bill. These will come back in the recap if somebody wants to think about it. And if not, maybe someone will reach out to me after the sale. All righty, Bill. Uh, $20, Jason, but I'm going to stick with mid-century. I brought a mid-century glass animal, um, this bull made by Kanawa. And I've only ever owned one of these in my life. Uh, Kanawa has a lot of great um, glass animals, uh, but I've only ever had the bull once before. And what's remarkable about this one is that there are lots of pulled pieces of glass here. Well, the tail is applied, the rest of it's all pulled. So the tail is applied on top of it once it's finished and there are no, there's no damage anywhere on this. It's really, really great. Um, so all four legs are there. Uh, and I brought this in honor of Jason tonight. Um, both of the horns, as you can see, are there and then the bull always has a tongue coming out of one side so it's off centered so it's on this side in this particular model but for me these kanawa and pilgrim does a good job with the mid-century glass animals they're just spectacular now again this is blown glass this bull has a bubble right there underneath his tongue that is the only inclusion in the entire piece and it's a good size. It's a nice sort of hefty. Um, yes, I agree, Michelle. <laughs> we're not we're not going to speculate. Um, so uh, it is four inches tall and five point five inches uh, from side to side. 
Um, Though I think you should have put a little Band-Aid over his fifth leg there. He's a little... Jason, that's why I brought him tonight, because same, this I... is exactly what you said on Monday. No, I I, exactly I don't recall it. saying bull on Monday. I never said bull on Monday, so I don't know what well, you're you did it. You said the part that I'm not going to say out loud. I, everybody I, sees is there. It's not after 10 o'clock. You should have put a little Band-Aid over his little, uh, <clears throat> little <clears throat> extremity there. I think it's all good. I think it's all good. <laughs> Oh my gosh! But just John's agree, not going to come back. John is not going to come back now because of <laughs> us doing this. He's going to send us a, a dear John afterwards, and he's going to be like, "Sorry, sorry, <laughs> fellas, I can't do this." <laughs> Look at the S on that tail, though. Like, how good is that? Who is looking at the tail, though? <laughs> Honestly, honestly, who is looking at the tail on that thing? Oh, um, Jason, Jason, Jason. I'm looking at the horns on him. I think he's got really because you can't see them from this this angle. So I that's what you're looking at. Really? I can see him. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you for your bid. I'm going to go ahead and count it down. If anyone else is interested, <laughs> now is the time uh, to own a little bit of uh, Valentino history. <laughs> uh, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15. 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. Just want to make sure my fingers aren't covering anything up. Mm -hmm. I'll see it. She was gorgeous beauty. I'm surprised Laura didn't ask you if it has any smells or odors. <laughs> So, just... <laughs> thank you for the bid end, Karen. Um, uh, it looks like this is going to Lillian for your bid of 21. Thank you so much. All right. John will get us back on track. Will I? Um, I have a choice <laughs> round starting at $22. That's a, that's a heavy lift you're asking for me. But these are a light lift. <laughs> these are these cute little <laughs> bunny. Um, I'm calling them bunny dolls. Um, they don't have hangers. Um, they look like knee huggers, but the way that these pieces are constructed, the legs move, but I don't think anatomically you're going to get their knees to hug in their arms like that. So $22, $22 for choice, the pink and the blue. They do have their all-new materials, Japan stickers on the back. Um, there's a bit of uh, glue, you know, like kind of overdone glue on the back of each of these. When they're making them, I guess they just used a lot of glue on them, but that's on the back. One's sleeping, one has their eyes completely open, I guess keeping watch. Um, this did get a little detached. You could kind of put a little spot of glue to get that back together right there. But um, other than that, just super cute. Um, they are The pink is a little bit taller in, or a little longer in length. That's five inches. The blue is four and three quarters inches. Cheryl, I see you in a 22 looking for 23 or more. Again, no hangers, so I call them dolls. I don't really know what to call them. Um, I don't know, just cute, cute little Easter kitschy bunnies. Yeah, they're good. I love the bows, do the little bows under the ears. Um, so Cheryl's in at 22, looking for 23 or more. Uh, remember using just in case this evening, so if you're an active bidder, you can use that when I start that countdown. I see Lyndon at 24, so now we're we'll looking for 25 or more. Again, just in case, in effect for active bidders. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid N. So we're looking for 27 or more right now or the bid N from Karen Gillette because Cheryl's in at 26. So 27 or more or the bid end. Gosh, these are so difficult to find. Cheryl, I see her just in case of 41. Linda, I see her just in case of 40. Linda's back with a just in case of 42. So there's the bid end. So Linda for 42 then, right? 42, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm all confused now with this. Hat. I don't know why I'm confused it. tonight. Um, let me know if you wanted the pink or the blue. And then if one or if one is left, then Cheryl will be back for you for 41. But currently Linda's got it at 42. Just let me know which or both you want. Uh, over to you, Brian, because I can watch the chat. <laughs> okay. Uh, $20 start bid. I'm bringing a planter uh, for Easter. It is made by D-B, so D-E-E-B-E-E -E -E in Japan. 
it does have a couple issues or a few issues that I will, I will point out. There is, of course, uh, when you try to show it, there's a tiny chip right there, right where my fingernail is. The tail also has like surface level chipping there. On the back, I'm actually a little unsure here. There, It's like a little divot. It, it might be a manufacturer's floor or it might be a chip. So just a little bit of like flea bites on the back. I actually was not able to find this particular planter anywhere online. Um, I think it's a little bit more uncommon perhaps. Um, full, full disclosure, the inside, like I don't feel like these were, this particular company or, or planter uh, was made in the same quality as probably some of the others. So there's like, there's like extra material at the bottom um, that kind of gives it it looks like you can kind of see it more in this corner. It's, it's like kind of stacked up a little bit. So um, just wanted to note that it's not completely smooth on the inside, but that is is how it was made. Uh, so again, um, look, $20, $20 to start. Thank you, Trina, for your bid. I don't know if I gave the measurements. I keep, I, I keep seeming to forget to do that tonight. It's five inches wide and 4.75 inches tall. I kind of like how they're facing opposite ways, like almost almost like they're mad at each other or something. It's kind of interesting that way instead of facing each other. They're kitschy cartoon yet realistic enough that I kind of yeah. love, I'm kind of here for it. And the wall pocket, wall yeah. pocket to boot. So you could actually, like, I'm, I'm assuming there probably was string or something there when it was originally sold. Uh, obviously not there anymore. I don't think I showed the bottom. It does have the sticker on the bottom and it is DB. I've actually never had anything else made by DB. Bill was saying earlier a little bit that they made, um, did you say nursery rhyme planters, Bill? Is that what you're saying? A bunch of nursery ceramics, not just planters. Oh, okay. I haven't come across anything uh, myself. So this was the first time I came across this brand. It was new to me. So looking for 21 or more. Uh, let's go ahead. We'll get the countdown started. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So looking for 21 or the bid end. Trina, thank you for your bid. Trina, base of 39. I don't think you're probably going to need it, but thank you for putting that in. And there's the bid end. So Trina, this is coming to you for 20. Thank you. Congratulations, guys. Let's give our friend Laura Wright. She's also known as Pinwheel Vintage over on Instagram. Please give her a follow. She is a reseller over there and she does participate in sales and she does have sales. So if you guys are over on Instagram, it is Pinwheel Vintage. Please give her a follow, especially for her static sales. She finds some really good linens. She always finds cookbooks, kitschy things. So please give our friend Laura a follow over there. Uh, Karen G, thank you so much. And Kim, thank you guys so much. Please, if you can throughout the sale, put some of your links in too. We'd like to uh, share in the community. So $24. And I thought this was very spring. Um, it, to me, it screams spring. It also screams summertime. Or if you guys just love a good floral uh, oil painting on canvas. So there is a few scratches on the yellow frame. The frame is metal. Um, I do believe because of the way the frame is constructed, I do think the frame is probably 1980-ish. Uh, the painting is signed, but I cannot make out the name. Maybe we can because the light's hitting it a little bit different. Uh, maybe it's R-A-I-D. I'm not too sure. But nonetheless, for $24, it's a gorgeous painting with a lot of pastel colors in it, some oranges in it. Um, you can keep it out all year round. So um, it is on a canvas, so it is can be taken out. The picture itself is a little smaller than the measurements I'm going to give you. So the measurements of the frame are 13 by 13. So it's probably a little less than that because as you can see, the canvas fits inside the metal frame. So let me get up here and show you guys the great texture on this. It's just a go gorgeous floral print of like, I see kind of a flowy kind of field with a lot of wildflowers in it maybe some trees off in the distance. And I just thought this would be great uh, for you guys to have out all year round. Or if you're looking for like a 
boho, mid-century, kind of 60s to 80s kind of feel in your decor, I thought it would definitely look good in that. So let me get in again so you guys can see all the great colors. We have some pinks. We have some purples. We have some oranges. And we have some yellows. You can see they did define some of the flowers really well. That one kind of looks like a daisy to me almost. And then kind of maybe some little violets maybe down there in the bottom. Um, I don't know if they all bloom at the same time. Bill, you can correct me if I'm wrong. But again, I that's guess those are, that's a that's a summer flower. Those are summer flowers. That's what I kind of thought. But I thought heading into spring, this would be great to get out. It kind of refreshes all of us. It is oil on canvas. I do believe uh, due to the frame and the way the canvas is held on it, I think this is probably somewhere between the seven, probably the very late sixties into the nineteen eighties. So again, it's thirteen by thirteen. If you're doing a gallery wall and you need some color, I think it would look really great. Um, if you had other pieces, for example, like I have this coming up, you can actually just pop the emerald in and I think it kind of pulls it out. I have some butterflies coming and I thought this kind of looked like the field that my butterflies could be kind of, you know, flying in, you know, and landing and getting some nectar and things off these uh, flowers. So Dusty Moose, thank you. I see you in a 24. So we're looking for 25 or more. Like I say, there is a little bit of wear to the frame. You have a little little boober right there. And I think there was a little boober right here. Let me see if we can get it in the frame there, right here. But if you guys are so inclined, you could reframe this, but I think the yellow brings everything out. Sandra, I see you in for 28. Um, I would leave it as is. You could probably touch it up, although this is like a metal tin sort of frame. And you can see the way they kind of butted it together with these nails. To me as a child, I remember in the eighties, that was very reminiscent of these, uh, expensive frames that we used to get, you know, back at the AC Moors and stuff back in the eighties to put, you know, frames together. So just by knowing that, I think this is probably 1980s, although it could be earlier. So we're in a 28, we're looking for 29 or more, 13 by 13, no damage to the uh, oil painting. It has the texture on the canvas. There's no issue to that. Just one or two little scuffs and a little wear to the frame. So Let's count it down, 29 or more, and we are doing just in case. So 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. This would look great on a wall with some cruels. It would look good with, you know, maybe some of those old like uh, butterflies and things that we used to hang on the wall, those kind of uh, um, Sirocco style butterflies and things. Dusty Moose, I see you're just in case or just by itself. So there's our bid end. Robin had a 31. Dusty had a just in case. So Dusty Moose, congratulations. It's yours for $32. All right, Bill. Um, so uh, $28, Jason. And I said that I had another piece of beautiful purple glass tonight. Um, I have this, and I know the manufacturer of this one, and probably a lot of you do too. It is definitely a Viking amethyst uh, bowl. People call these the tidbit bowls or lots of handkerchief bowls, lots of different names for them. But this one is super, super nice. I love the way that it is. Um, oh, so sweet. So sweet. You got it. Thank you, guys. I love the way that all of the different, um, the different points are all, they're all bent in just a little bit of a different way, which I think is super cool. Um, and it's a good size. It's on the smaller size when it comes to these bowls. It's three inches tall and six inches across. And just like the piece of amethyst glass that I showed earlier, this one too is full of uranium. I mean, look at it all. It's crazy. So check your purple glass, everyone. If you have one of these lights, check your purple glass. And we, as we said earlier, uh, this is just a great color for this season, but also other seasons as well. And I'm going to go ahead, if anybody does decide they want it, not that this is a big selling point. Um, I think these uh, vintage glittered eggs are super cool too. I think they're from the 1980s. I'm going to go ahead and uh, they just look like a nice little display in here just for this time of the year. Um, but it's really obviously the bowl that you're all bidding on. But super, super cute. Nice bottom. Again, nice smooth Viking glass. We talked about that before. 
These make great little votive holders. You pop a little votive in that, take that out on your porch or patio. It'll set a nice ambiance. And I love the way they bent that one down a little bit to get that's it more cool. of a handle to, to carry really like it. That, that one, that's very unique for that. I like that too. So pretty. All right. Well, we will move it along because we still have we still have a couple rounds left. I'm not going to go out on a limb and say because someone will correct me, but we still have a couple rounds left. Bill, why is it always someone? We all corrected you that <laughs> night. We all did. It was a JJ, thank you for the starting bit up because it's a starting bit of 28 as well. I have a Napco uh, planter. Jason had some mushroom, pastel mushrooms earlier. Mm -hmm. I have a pastel mushroom planter. Um, this is, like I said, Napco. This is C9592. It doesn't have its Napco sticker, a little bit of remnants of something there, but just stamped with the Napco catalog number. This sweet little um, child uh, with a little bunny on its lap, and there's a little squirrel underneath the mushroom. God. I love the kind of floral motif there's a little butterfly sorry patty there's a butterfly in here somewhere right there um yeah i just love this for easter and uh just generally for spring four and a half inches tall by five and a half inches wide um a good size planter as planters go um i think this was used it could use a little bit of a cleaning but that may just be staining from when it was used to i didn't give it a clean but not guaranteeing anything but super sweet haven't seen this one um previously so i wanted to bring it to the sale this one's fantastic i saw this one time on ebay last year and it was 68 dollars, and it got nabbed before i could, could really get yeah yeah, they yeah did i was trying to find season. them i was trying to find another one i don't know if there was a variation or if this was the only one there was series. there was yeah. there was one that had that one has a little boy there was a little girl but they reversed it a little bit or it's yeah the I, think, I assume that's... because of the pink this is the girl i don't know Who then knows they had like name? a they had like a boy and they both got nabbed for 68 dollars like instantaneously when i saw them that's the worst when you see something and you just uh -huh. miss out. Like I was just yeah. like, so I happened to me a couple weeks. I was just thinking about something like, and an hour later it was too late. Yeah. Uh, Muggsy, I seen it at 28, looking for 29 or more. Oh, the only thing I need to note, um, there is a little bit of a chip right there in the end of the uh, foot right there. It's very, very, very tiny. That's the only thing I really noticed on this one, but I wanted to point that out. So if that's an issue. Let me know. But other than that, I think that's all that I saw. I love this uh, style too. Napco seemed to around this time because you've seen the bunny painting the egg with the paintbrush. Mm -hmm. They did a similar kind of this watercolor wash to their planters. Mm -hmm. And I really kind of like that, especially for the spring planters. Tree and I see unit 30 looking for 31 or more. Again, we're doing just in case for active bidders. So that means you need to have a bid in before I start that countdown. And then you can use the just in case to protect your bid or get it if you really want to get a chance at getting this um, in your hands when I start that countdown. So uh, looking for 31 or more. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Bid end. So we're looking for 31 or more at the bid end from Karen Gillette. Um, that's also just some extra ceramic that got glazed over in the back little drips from when they made it. Mugs AIC are just in case of 36. So we're looking for 37 or more or that bid end right now. And there's the bid end. So with the just in case Muggsy had for 36, it's coming to you for 31. Thank you so much. Over to you, Brian. Jason, starting at $25, I have a pair of tall, long neck uh, dog salt and pepper shakers made by Napco. They are in very good shape overall, but they do have crazing. No chips, cracks, or breaks, but there is crazing that's pretty visible. Um, particularly on the female. I don't know if it's coming through. You can kind of see some lines there, um, some more over here. Uh, but otherwise, other than the crazing, they are in really good shape. Let me try to point out some of the crazing on the, again, on the back side here. Hopefully the light is kind of catching it and you can see that there's crazing there. And these measure 8.75 inches tall. They're a good size obviously very skinny um the way this one was manufactured looks like there's a little bit of, not look but there is a little bit of extra paint there uh from when they painted them um and that is underneath so that's not on the not on the surface good paint overall polka dotted and 
The bottoms have one missing a stopper here, Napco sticker. And then this one does have the rubber stopper as well. Gosh, I love these. These are so difficult to find. Yeah, I know they're hard to come across, but I there's something about the tall ones that are just, it's like very intriguing, I think, because that's not the normal shape, right? That we think of salt and pepper shakers or animal shakers usually. So yeah. they're kind of intriguing. I, I see Heidi at 29. Thank you so much. Again, uh, what did I say? 8.75 inches tall. Uh, point out a little bit of the crazing here, as you can see. Again, more on the back side and on the sides. It's not really coming through on the actual clothing. It's just mostly mostly noticeable on the, the white areas. Gosh, these are so these are actually probably holy grail for some salt and pepper collectors. Like we were fortunate to get a set a few years ago, yeah. but we had to wait forever to find them. I think I picked these up last summer. I'm trying to remember now. I think I, I think I've held held on to them for a little bit waiting for a, a, a good sale and the kind of colors are you know, a little bit springtime colors as well yeah these are fantastic yeah. let's go ahead we'll get the countdown started since we've got a bid uh 20 19 18 17 16 15 14 13 12 11 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 and 1 so we're looking for 30 or the big end and I'm not going to dare put them on a platform and try to hold them both up at the same time. And John just messaged me in a private chat. He had to step away for a second. He'll be back in a few moments. So he'll be okay. back. Then. The eyelashes. And, and there's our bid end. Thank you so much. These are coming to you, Heidi. Appreciate it. Hi, Heidi. Congratulations. All right, guys. I have a choice round of $10 choice. Uh, these are all made in Taiwan. They are all porcelain. And they are all part of a series made by the Franklin Mint called Butterflies of the World, okay? So I have four for you to choose from. Three of them, I have the Certificate of Authenticity. So I will show them to you like this so you can see. They all roughly measure about two by two. They're very dainty. They are very delicate. They will, I will take my time shipping them, but they just think they are gorgeous. And I think they would look great in any kind of decor. So not only do they depict the uh, butterfly, but then if you get the certificate of authenticity, it gives you the detail of the flower that they're on and the region that they're from. This one did not have an authentic uh, uh, sheet for it. And this one is called the blue doctor. So that is the blue doctor butterfly. They all have their little tentacles. They are all this gorgeous little porcelain. And then each one is marked on the bottom. And these are from the Franklin Mint. These are 1985. So they did a whole series in 1985. So $10 choice. And um, some of them still have their Taiwan stickers on them. So this one is the Australian one. So this is your Australian uh, break butterfly. Look at the gorgeous purple on that with the little yellow flower. This one does have its certificate of authenticity with it. Again, usually when I find these kind of pieces, they're usually broken or repaired. And again, you can see down here that it does have its initials on it and it does say 1985. So again, these would be great little uh, giveaways, little centerpieces to use on your Easter table. I thought they would make great Easter gifts. Or if you guys collect butterflies or want, you know, a nice, you know, summery kind of feel, thought these would be great for you. So we have a quality vintage in at 10. That was your second choice. I want to be very careful with these. This one is your marbled white butterfly. Look at the detail. And actually, you guys, I did a, a Google image search of these. They did such a good job on these that it picks it up and depicts it as a real butterfly. So the Franklin Mint, I think, did a really good job with these. And this one will have a certificate of authenticity. And if my camera wants to focus, this one has the Made in Taiwan. And of course, these are all from 1985. And then finally, I have the uh, Queen Purple Tip Butterfly. So you can see, yep, there's the purple tip. The center of them has a pale yellow. And again, all the tentacles are there. And they're kind of a thicker like um, like when they do the ceramics and give like the cat's whiskers, that's what the the, uh, the uh, tentacles are made of. I hope I'm using the right terminology. And again, there's no, the antennas, there are no chips at all to any of those. 
teeny tiny little porcelain flowers at all. And this one has its certificate of authenticity. Then so does this one, which this is the marbled white. None of these glow under black light, although this one in the sunlight definitely does glow. So we're still in a 10. We're looking for 11 or more. Then this one is your Australian break butterfly. Look at the two tones right there. Robin, I see your 11. Thank you so much. And we'll have some more of these in our vamp sale on Sunday at 730. And then we'll also I'll have some more of these again on Monday. And that should round us out for all the ones that I got. So if you're interested, please come over to vamp 730 Sunday night or come see me and Bill Monday night and I should have the remainder of them. So let's count them down. We'll start with one, two, three, or four. That's how we'll call them or by the names. So we're looking for 13 or more. Let's go ahead and count them down from 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, one, bid end. I see you're just in you're just in case quality vintage Ohio. And again, these run the gamut. If you do some research on these, some of these go all over the place price-wise. So I see Robin's just in case. Thank you so much. It's waiting on the bid end. I see it coming in from Karen G. Smalls, your 22 did come in right after the bid end. I'm so sorry. But Robin, at 16, you get first choice. So this one, we'll try to do this as quickly as possible. This one will be number one. That one has no certificate of authenticity. That's the blue doctor. This one was number two, the same way I showed them to you. So that one is number two. That's the Australian break. This is the marbled white. That's number three. And then number four is the queen purple tip. So just let me know, Robin, at 16, which ones are ones you want. The last three I showed you have their certificate of authenticity. The first one did not. And we'll just wait to see from Robin. And then I will try to do the rest in the chat very quickly. So this one is number four. This one was number two, which is also your, your white marbled, the marbled white. That one was number two. And then this one was number one. So just let me know, Robin, which one or ones you want. This one really kind of glows underneath the light. They did a really good job with these. I shy away sometimes from these when I see them, but these were so detailed, I couldn't let them. So um, hopefully Robin's still here with us. You hear, Robin, it, look, we dropped a couple numbers. I hope the internet isn't acting up again. So Robin, let me know if you're still here. Which one are ones you want? All but the blue, please. Okay, so you don't want this one. Thank you so much. I got you. So we will go back here to uh, Quality Home, Quality Vintage Ohio. Let me know if you wanted this one at your bid of 15. And if you take a pass, that'll be it. It'll come back for the recap. This one did not have its certificate of authenticity. So let me know if you were interested. Uh, Quality Vintage Ohio in this one for 15. And I'll watch the chat. Bill, you're up, my friend. Uh, Twenty-two dollars, and I have um, I have another piece, another wall art. I brought two today, as I said earlier. I have this gorgeous painted bouquet um, in this very ornate carved wooden frame. Now, this painting is on uh, it's on wood, so as you can see, it's held in with these paint pointers, um, which would be super easy to take out and ship if you didn't want this big frame. Of course, if you want the frame, it comes with it, obviously, but the frame is 18 inches. So that gets us to a package that's longer than 18 inches. So that's something to consider um, if you're on the West Coast. But again, the frame is yours if you want it, if anyone bids on it. Uh, the frame itself is 18 by 15.5, and the actual painting that you can see on the back is 10 by 8. So let me give you a close up. It is gorgeous of all of these soft pastels. Um, it is signed by B Field. So it is a signed piece by B Field. And I love the frames too. In fact, we have a gallery wall in our living room with landscapes and all of them are in frames like this. I'm obsessed with these like 1960s, early 1970s wooden frames. I think they're great. 
Um, but the painting here is amazing. It does have one of those canvas, uh, sort of canvas on top of wood. Uh, what do we call those again? Um, on the mat. And yeah. The um, mat. Yep. And it's beveled. So there's actual uh, two levels of beveling here. Um, so there's a lot of dimension, a lot of detail. You can see from the side. It's just really, really pretty. Um, but again, for me, you know, the peonies and the big probably, I don't know, maybe Foxglove uh, or Clarkia maybe uh, are really the star of the show in this really, really soft, pastel -y, uh color palette. And it's in great condition. In fact, I was even looking at the frame where you usually see a lot of bangs and scratches. I don't really see anything of note. And then the surface of the painting itself is also really, really good. They want to know the measurements again, Bill. So the with the frame, it's 18 long, 15 five across. The painting itself, if you just wanted that sent to you, is 10 by eight. Um, and it's just on wood, so it would be super, super light. Um, but again, who wouldn't want the frame? I mean, maybe you wouldn't want the frame, but who wouldn't want the frame? I think the um, frame gives it such good character. It's such a gorgeous piece. I could see this in your powder room. Do you know what I mean? Like this could be your, I know a gallery wall, but I think this stands alone and would look and brighten up a small room. Yeah, I think too, if you wanted the painting in something softer than this sort of dark wood, the dark wood is perfect for something else you might have. And you could you could pop this uh, painting out and put it into something that um, that is softer than this. But again, I'm always attracted to these wooden frames. I think they're fantastic. And then with a floral on the inside, just for me, it's amazing. But as you can see, it is a big piece. Gorgeous. And we have after this, so this is our... This is our third to last actual round before our recap and before our quick claims. So I'm going to move it along and bring it back at the recap. All right. Jason, uh, $15. Okay. Um, funnily enough, none of us compare notes, um, but this is a Westmoreland uh, print ad. I love vintage advertising and I love if you collect milk glass or collect certain things to pair those things with uh, print ads from the time of those items, I think is really nice. Um, so Bill originally had, uh, earlier in the sale, had one of the bud vases that are hand painted. I believe that is it in this uh, print ad. This is from 1962. It measures nine by 12. Um, it is from House Beautiful. It is an original ad. This is not a reprint, again, from Westmoreland Glass Company. Um, it says, Westmoreland's collection of handmade milk glass gifts embraces variety in pattern, design, shape, and price. Gifts that beautifully convey the donor's sincere sentiments. Each item meticulously handmade by methods used at the turn of the century is distinguished for its quality and authenticity. Send 10 cents for a Westmoreland reproduction booklet from Great Bill, Pennsylvania. Peppermint Patty, I see you at 15 looking for 16 or more. I just love the fact that it's a time capsule of seeing what was available. So that's that Argonaut. Look, I, I don't think I've seen the cat dish, but I definitely have not seen what I think looks like a deer covered candy dish no, before. The deer. See the baskets, the, um, see the wedding yeah. cake box, um, the hand painted cherries on the creamer and sugar, the hand painted cherries on that. There was a lot of hand painting in this 1962 ad. So Peppermint Patty's in at 15, looking for 16 or more. Again, this is an original print ad um, from 1962, pulled from House Beautiful. Um, it, it frames up really nicely. I had it in my preview, um, just as like a quick, you know, framed up for just that preview, but it looks really nice uh, if you want to frame this uh, for yourself or professionally. Uh, looking for 16 or more, just in case, is in uh, effect for active bidders. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. So we're looking for 16 or more at the bid end from Karen Gillette. My, my aunt had the square one on the second row, and now my sister has it, so it's kind of cool to see. Yeah, I mean, that's what I love. Like, these are, to me, time capsules of seeing. Sometimes we can't date things if we don't have the books. Not that you're going to look for every print ad, but sometimes the print ads are really the key to finding out. So Peppermint Patty, thanks so much, Jennifer, for this. This is coming to you for 15. Oh, that's so cool, John. It is cool. My next item is a little higher. It's going to be $60. You got it, sir. And I'm bringing this Poodle Music Box Candle Holder. 
Uh, this is another piece like the cats that I've had, and I have not been able to identify who it is, who makes it. There is no marking on the bottom, but this is in very good condition without any damage that I'm seeing. It does, it does play. Um, hopefully you can kind of hear it. It is 7.5 inches tall, and you would put three taper candles in it. Um, it gives me birthday vibes, I guess you could say, um, but doesn't necessarily have to be for birthdays. Um, just really good condition overall. If anybody has seen this before and knows the maker, please feel free to shout out or put it in the comments. I've been very unsuccessful again uh, over time trying. I think we all have those items that we hold on to. We're like, I'm going to figure out what this is one day. And you, you know, you periodically look and you just sometimes never find it timing isn't right or you're looking at the wrong time or whatever it is and this is this is one of those items for me the uh flowers are in good shape um it's got these nice tiny flowers uh all around the candles uh the dog is sitting on the pillow of some kind i mean it is ceramic but made to look like a pillow um i don't even know what song it's playing because the sticker that may have said that on the bottom is no longer there it's just a sweet poodle face there it feels very 50s to me or 60s yeah i feel like tina had one of the dogs before in her poodle collection and i think it was napco i think the poodle is napco they made a series of these and i gotta kind of agree with dusty moose it could be a uh lipstick holder oh that I, makes sense yeah because you know what even that makes more sense because even as i was when i bought it i was like I don't know that you'd want the flames at a slight angle. So that makes yeah. way more sense. Okay. No, I, yeah, this, I, I got to tell I think the one, cause yeah. we, we, we sold it a few years ago. I think it was a Napco was okay. this same dog, the same poodle. This is, I mean, this is a hard one to find. This is good. Music this. works in very good shape. And again, 7.5 inches tall. Gorgeous. That lipstick, I don't know why I didn't think of that. That makes so much more sense, but it's like, it looks like a typical candle. It does. Light, you know? It does. But that, that makes way more sense. Yeah. But, they, they made them sort of deep, too. But yeah. yeah, I see. Yeah. Well, it doesn't seem like we've got interest, and I know we, we've got a few more items to get through, so we will keep it moving. All right, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. We are the Valentinos. We are here every other. We always get together every other Friday. So we will be back over here again. Off one week, we'll be back the next. So, um, right. That's what Tina says. So, guys, please make sure you're following all of the Valentinos. All their links are in the description down below. And thank you, Karen G and Kim. Thank you, ladies, so much for assisting us and being our mods and bid ender. So, $30. I have a piece of 1980s Fenton. They did these in a couple different colorways. This is the butterfly on the rose. Some folks call it the desert rose, but I'm just going to call it the rose. They say that this is emerald green. In some lights, it looks like the colonial green, but I have to tell you, I have a piece of colonial green. I put it up next to it. It does look a little bit different. So I'm going to go with what everybody keeps calling it, and they're calling it emerald green. Okay. So it has this three dimensional butterfly on the top. No chips, no cracks. There's no issues to the dish. I will hold it up here and we'll see if you guys can see there is a little eight in that circle with Fenton. So this is a little covered dish from the 1980s. So there is the bottom part. Again, there are no chips to the rims. When it is fully put together, it measures about five inches tall and it is about five inches wide. So let me show you the top here. Get in. They did some great details with the butterfly. Uh, if my camera wants to work with me. There you go. You can see they did great details on that. A couple times I've ever seen this piece. I, I love it. It's gorgeous, Dawn. And the few times I've seen it, it always seems to get chips or nicks on it. There are none at all on this piece. And you can find it in different colorways if you want to. But I was thinking for this time of the year, how great is this green to mix in with your spring decor? I kind of thought it would pull out the colors into that painting I had. And again, this is their butter, their butterfly covered dish. And it is a rose. Like I said, sometimes they called it the desert rose. And it's a gorgeous little powder jar, trinket dish, candy dish, whatever you want it to be. And it is from the 1980s. So 
Um, again, if you guys love your Fenton, Fenton didn't do a ton of butterfly pieces. Of course, they did like a ring holder and some other things, but they're really known for this covered uh, rose dish. And again, they say that it's emerald. It would pair well with your uh, colonial green. But I just think it is a gorgeous dish. And again, it is Fenton, 1980s. There are no chips to those wings. <sighs> one or two times I thought I was going to find one of these to bring to a live sale. And wouldn't you know it, the wings have a chip on it. So let's see if we can show you some more of that great detail on there. Of course, here is the head. Here is the back of the butterfly. They kind of did scallop it a little bit to give it some detail. You can see they did do some, I mean, they didn't have to do that. They gave it some great detail on those wings. So, and again, it is a rose. Let's see if we can hold it like this so you guys can see how it looks from the top. But it's just a very, very gorgeous bowl. And I love this piece by Fenton. It's very, very collectible. And like I said, it does come in other colorways. This one is in their emerald green. We'll just take another moment here for the lag, see if anybody's interested. And again, it is marked Fenton here on the bottom. Maybe I can show it to you better from the inside. So there you can see the Fenton. And it, it does. It has tremendous details. And the, usually every time I find one, there's usually a chip to the wing or the butterfly has been completely knocked off. But there is an eight right there. And it is Fenton. So it is 1980s Fenton, probably the middle 80s if I were to guess. Thank you, Robin. I see you in a 30. So we're looking for 31 or more. Again, five inches this way, five inches that way. There's no chips on the rim. There's no chips on the top. Thank you, Cheryl. These are a little difficult to find that aren't damaged. So when they're damaged, they, they, they are very, very collectible and folks do love them. And some people call them the cabbage rose. I'm just calling it the rose because that's what I've always known it as. So let's count it down. We're looking for 31 or more. Robin's in at 30. So 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, to one bid end. Heck, I look for any reason to turn it into a fairy light. You can throw a couple, you know, tea lights in there, make it glisten. It's going to be gorgeous all year round if you love butterflies and flowers and all these good things coming our way here soon. It'll be fun to have in your decor. There is our bid end. So, Robin, congratulations. It's yours for $30. All righty, Bill. Yep, you're muted, Bill. Sorry, um, I'm getting cupcakes made for me, so the mixer is a little. Oh, cool. nice. Oh. All right, $12, Jason. And I have a cute little pair of shakers that just remind me of summer. These little ladies who are wearing these um, sort of necklaces of flowers. I think they're so cute. And speaking of Norcrest, that's who they are. They are Norcrest with a lot of interesting black paint under the glaze on the bottom but they do have they both have that beautiful norcrest sticker on them and they both still have their stoppers and i think they're super they're super good for this time of the year the only condition issue that i see on either of them is the red stripes on the dresses appear to be cold paint so you do see a little bit of loss um, in some places but other than that they are in super great condition they are shakers as i said they're in super great condition and I think really, really cute. Um, and my only kitsch for the whole night, actually, which is very strange for me. Um, so this is my kitsch round. They're 4.25 inches tall. Bill, I'm on my way. You'll save me one, right? <laughs> Everybody wants cupcakes. <laughs> we all want your cupcakes, oh. Bill. No, you want my shakers, not my cupcakes. <laughs> I'll buy the shakers if it comes with a cupcake. I don't share my cupcakes. That's one thing. No, 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 no. Okay. Cupcakes are my thing. I love them. They do look Hawaiian, don't they, Dawn? You know, maybe, yeah. maybe, but Norcrest makes a set of hula girls, mm -hmm. um, and they're not this set. Um, and this set has a variation where it's one of these girls, and actually – the other one is a little soldier boy. So I'm not really sure if they were meant to be Hawaiian or they were meant to be Asian. I, I just don't know. So I'm just calling them the flower girls because I think they're super cute. They're, they're really neat. I like them. 
I love yeah. the color on them. Yeah, they're a good color. They're summer. To me, it's summer. Yeah. Like these are the these are the shakers you bring to the picnic or to the beach. Well, quite frankly, for most of us, these are the shakers that live behind glass. But uh -huh. um, in our yeah. minds, in our minds, we bring them outdoors where they can be enjoyed. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start a countdown. Uh, thank you for your bid. If anyone else is interested, now is the time. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, bid end. Was that, was that the beep that they were done? No, that was the beep that the oven is oh. preheated. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Patty's surprised that baking is going on at 1030 at night. Oh, that's normal and, here. That is normal here. Believe me. And Philomena is flying in from Australia to get some of uh, Chris's cupcakes. So they're, con they're confetti cupcakes, too. So Keep thank you, Lillian. Up. These are yours for 12. Thank you. <laughs> Keep rubbing it in, Bill. Keep rubbing it in, Bill. I'm going to have, have to make some my, cupcakes. They're my big weakness. I'm not making cupcakes tomorrow. I'll make them. Or tomorrow. I'll make them tomorrow, not tonight. Um, Jason, $26. I have a piece of vintage, well, antique glass. This is a piece of early American pressed glass. Um, from my research, this is by a company called U.S. Glass Company, circa 1893. It is the broken column open compote, um, a.k.a. rattan. Uh, this measures five and three quarters inches tall by five and a quarter inches wide at the top. At the base, this is three and a half inches wide. I love clear glass for displays and things because it basically acts as a neutral, just like the milk glass does. Um, I like using these pieces for my plants, not nod to Bill. Um, I like using all of my pedestal glass to display uh, plants at different heights, um, just to mix it up too. So I wanted to bring that little prop to show you how to use it. Um, I also believe that this does glow. My black light is not the right black light. Um, I have a smaller one, which is weirdly more powerful and does something different that my big one does not do, but I'm pretty sure this glows pretty green if you have the right black light. This is gorgeous. This is a very unique piece that I've never seen before. I haven't seen it either. This is neat. Almost, yeah, I like it. It's got the, these little indents on the little finger. I'm going to call these fingers. I, I, I don't know. They them. remind me of fingers. Yeah. Yeah, they have these little, I don't know if I'm going to, yeah, you can see like these little indents mm -hmm. on the top and like the bottoms of them. Um, but yeah, just really striking. And I like the way, like if you have it in a place that kind of can get some light or like Jason said, if you do a tea light thing in here, that would look really nice in this too. Any of the color changing tea lights would be nice too. Um, I, I love using like those for everything too now. I mean, I'm so happy. Like there are other things where I'm like, ah, technology. But I do like the mm -hmm. uh, battery operated tea lights because, you know, don't have to worry about uh, leaving them on and being unattended. You can do whatever you want these days and be pretty safe about it. This is open, just so you know, it's not filled in right there. Trina, I see you in at 26, looking for 27 or more. I mean, you can use it as a candy dish if you want. No harm, no foul in using that. I just like using all, I have a lot of the Viking open, um, the bonbon dishes and things and the raised dishes. I have a Ellie Smith cake uh, platter in uh, the Amberina that I love using to hold a larger plant pot. It's just a great way to bring glass in your displays or the, in your home if you're not like the traditional kind of like, let me show all of my glass. It's nice to mix it with all your plants. I so Trina's at 26 looking for 27 or more. Again, just in case it's in effect for active bidders, you just need to have at least one bid in before that countdown starts to throw a just in case in. 20, 19, yes. 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, bid end. So we're looking for 27 or more or the bid end from Karen Gillette. I could Shall see, the, check to see if it glows. I, I, yeah, it does glow. It just my black light, I have two black lights and the smaller one is more powerful or has a different, and so it does glow green. I just don't have that black light next to me. Because right. it's really crazy. It's a crazy glow. I wish I could show it. Well, that's that's the period where almost all the clear would glow. Yep. Yep. Ill prepared, or I have still. I don't know where it went. It's it it probably because it's so small it disappeared. I have no idea. It might have rolled somewhere here. Uh, so there's a bit of training that's coming for twenty six. Thank you so much. And I just wanted to say, I think that would look good with some of those alabaster eggs in it. Make a little Easter basket out of it. It would look good. 
Yeah, for sure. All right, sir. My starting bid is 28 and I am bringing this ceramic uh, goodie basket here. It's got cookies on the outside. The lid does come off and it was made in Japan, but there is no maker other than that. Uh, very good condition overall with just right here. I think they missed some glaze. It's a rough spot. It's not a chip, but it seems like they missed glaze there. So it's got biscuits and cookies on it, and it could be a mini cookie jar or um, a trinket holder, whatever you like. It measures five inches tall and 5.5 .5 inches wide. These handles are just, they don't, they don't go through to the inside. It's just part of the, the look of it. So looking for $28 to start on this piece. That would go good with your cookies all over cookie jar. It would. You know. it would. Inside is good. Uh, just double check again. No, no chips on the lid anywhere on the inside. Same thing. Double check again. You know, like you check these things and then if you get to the sale, you're like, oh, shoot, I missed that. Um, but yeah, no, no chips on the, the rim either. Good shape overall. The glaze is good. Uh, the paint is underneath the glaze, so really no paint loss um, on the on the piece. So good. Stamp Japan, but no other makers. And my research, another piece I was not able to find the particular maker on. Um, it looked similar to other people who had it, also could not find the maker, didn't know the maker necessarily as well. That would make a good cupcake holder. Good it cupcake would holder. be a good cupcake holder. <laughs> you don't need a cupcake holder because they shouldn't be around that long. <laughs> <laughs> if they're that good, you should space it out, not make your other half bake as often. So <laughs> well, that's the way Tina has me conditioned. I have to pace things <laughs> out. Pace it out. <laughs> There's a whole bunch of these cookie jars with that exact Japan stamp on the bottom. Yeah. And nobody yeah. knows who made them. I have, yeah. I had one. I don't know if I still had it. It was a uh, candy and it was very similar. I got them actually from the same person, but it was like lollipops on the outside and like gumdrops or something like that. But it, just again, Mark Japan, that's it. Uh, no, no maker. But it doesn't seem like we have interest, so we'll keep it moving along. All right. Guys, stick around. We are going to have a recap, and we do have some quick claims coming tonight, including I have two mystery mystery boxes full of Easter that will be offered during the quick claim. So stick around, guys. $28, and if you guys are looking for a smaller piece of mid-century pottery, I have one of these unique. It took me a while to find one. I have a turquoise one in my collection, but I found what they call the Tweed. So it does have its original sticker by Hager. So it is the tweed, and I want to make sure it is the tweed glaze, they call it. So to me, it's like the brushed antique. The undercolor is like a gray, pale blue. So it's like a gray, pale blue. Um, if you love a sticker, it does have its original Hager sticker, and it is the Royal Hager marked on the bottom. So again, just $28 if you guys are looking for a smaller you know, mid-century style vase. Usually when you see these, you find the larger one. This is the smaller one. I figured this might be, you know, a little bit different. If you have the large one, you could pair this one with it. But again, I'll get in here. It is the uh, gold tweed effect to it. This pairs well with Stangle. If you're familiar, Stangle did the same style of thing. This measures uh, nine inches tall, nine inches tall by five inches wide. No chips or cracks at all to the rim. It is very clean on the inside, as clean or as far down as I could get. It is a very, you know, mid-century, very atomic mod style vase. Um, again, to find this size one, I don't see all that often. Not calling it rare. I just don't see the smaller one all that often. Usually find the one that's a little larger. So I thought this would be great. You could put some of your spring flowers in this, of course, use it throughout the year to put different flowers in. And it is a great, great mid-century color. Let me get in here so you guys can see that detail. It sort of is somewhere between a pale, pale gray and a very, very light blue. Um, every time we've paired this in our mid-century, it always pulls the blue out in it. And if you pair it with a different color, sometimes it pulls the gray out. So they were very prone to when people didn't take care of them to get chips around the rim. There are none. And if you guys love a sticker, it does have its original sticker, which that's what I think kind of ticks this up to the next level. And it is the gold tweed glaze. 
which is what you're seeing here. It's kind of this brushed antique. Um, the light is giving it a heck of a glare. That's why I keep trying to uh, move it around. So uh, again, mid-century, you can't beat it without the arch. Not seeing any interest in it. That's okay. We can bring it back during the recap, but it was $28. It is Royal Hager. It has its original sticker, some 1960s pottery, and let's keep it moving. I think this is our last uh, auction round, isn't it, Bill? It is, Jason. You okay. are correct. I do not need to, to correct you on that one. You are correct. $8 um, start, and I have a creamer because sometimes I bring some creamers, but I love this one because it is pansies. Pansies all over. Another perfect flower of the spring. And this is a 1990 Fitz and Floyd piece. It still has its Fitz and Floyd sticker on the bottom, and it's in great condition. And it's big. It's a big creamer. So if you're someone who we actually use these in the house because I make popcorn all the time and I melt, melt my butter in them. Um, but this is big enough to be a gravy boat if you only have like a family of three or four. Um, it's it's got a lot of different uses, but I think it's super pretty to even put make you know put a flower frog in the bottom of it and to use it as a little planter. Um, it's just got super spring vibes, and then there's a basket weave pat pattern in the background along the bottom. So, so pretty. Yeah, Fitz and Floyd is a great, great solid pottery. If you're looking for something that's not mid-century, something a little later, they really took over and, and did some really great stuff. It's got a rope detailed handle. And as far as condition, it's in great condition. If you're going to nitpick on one of the flowers, there's a tiny little paint loss. Tiny. And I, I can't. I found it beforehand. I tried to look, at, look for it right before I showed it. I couldn't find it. But it's there on one of the flowers. Um, super, super good. So $8 start bid if anyone's interested. Um, and if not, we'll bring it back in a few minutes and I'm going to let the other guys go ahead so we can get through. Uh, $28, Jason. This is going to be for the pair. Um, there is a condition issue with one of them. Um, I have uh, the Grant Crest uh, gardening <laughs> boy and girl figurines. These are pretty large. Um, the repair to note is on the boy. He lost his neck at some point and then it was repaired. So I think the repair is okay. It's an older repair. So the glue, you can kind of see the discoloration, but because of kind of like the overall coloring of him, I actually hadn't noticed it until I was prepping like an hour before our sale. And that's when I noticed it because that's when you notice these things. Mm -hmm. um, he's got a little uh, head of lettuce. He's carrying a little water can. I love the style of these. This is not paint loss. That's just how, I guess it was done because it's under the kind of glaze there. You kind of see the back of his pants right there. I love the just kind of style and the kind of motion on this one. So that's the boy. The girl doesn't seem to have any um, things to note. I think maybe the story is that she kind of knocked him with the hoe that she's carrying. Maybe he said something that, you know, wasn't appropriate. She's carrying a bunch of beets um, or kohlrabi yeah. or something. Turnips. What's that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Turnips. But I love these. Um, They're not marked a Grant Crest. That's just based on my own research. There's the remnants of a Japan, a tiny, tiny little bit of a Japan sticker right there. Um, I love that they're in their bare feet. That's what I love. That they're just like in their bare feet out working in the field. And these would be great to like, like you were saying, all year long. All year long in your summer decor, clear through into the fall. Yeah, I mean, like with the, um, uh, I paired this, I forget my preview, what I paired it with, but I think with the the um, Westmoreland ad or anything like that, any, of, like among your plants, again, anything, you know, the kind of just is a little bit of a nod to them. I just, I haven't seen these before. I don't even know if I gave you um, the heights on, these are about six inches tall, three and a half inches wide. So yeah, they are taller. Um you can kind of see how big they are, and they have a little bit of weight to them. But Grant Crest is not something uh, a manufacturer that I'm as familiar with. I don't know their work as, as much. I love the little pointy hair, and again, it just seems like they're kind of in the midst of working and then kind of got caught in a little bit of a wind gust. Um, but $28, I will bring these back for a recap, which will be starting after the next two fellows do their rounds. All right, sir. $20 start. Um, the next item, and I have a Bartlett Collins cookie jar. And it's in very good shape overall. No chips uh, or cracks to the glass. I do want to highlight on the gold, uh, get it in the right way. There's a little bit of gold paint loss or 
Uh, you can see it a little bit more on that leaf in particular. It's just like the the gold in particular seems to have some some lightness or was painted lightly and has some loss. This is the better leaf. The tip there, um, a little bit more on that one in particular and a little bit more on this one there. Um, open up to show you the inside. Very good condition, like I said, and it is nine inches tall. So I'm looking for $20 to start. Uh, has the, the seam that's you know, manufactured seam there. That's not a crack or anything. Um, show you the little bit paint loss there. It is the, it's the gold on the leaf, um, which I, I know, you know, even the barware that has this kind of gold, it, it, it's prone to somewhere. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know what it was about that particular paint or, or composition of that paint in particular. I, I don't know what I'm missing here. Um, $20? Yeah. Like I've seen lids go for $35 or $40. <laughs> like I feel like are I'm you, are, you, are you angry about my price bill? I'm sorry. I feel like I'm in the twilight zone. <laughs> I love the fact that it still has all of its fruit and flowers on it. Yeah. Usually that's been yeah. all wiped away and it's just a white jar with a lid on it. I mean, this is a phenomenal <laughs> example of Bartlett Collins. It's a with a price tag of $80 on it. <laughs> Steel Whisper, I see you for 20. <laughs> it's a good looking piece. Listen to Bill, everybody, okay? <laughs> <laughs> bid it up, bid it up high. Bill says to bid it up. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, there's different styles. I mean, some people like the the more the like mod, yeah. the mod yeah. flower ones in particular, you know? Um, so I, I recognize I recognize that, but good, good shape then, overall. The Patty lids, Rose, I see you for 25. The lid's universal. I think that lid also yeah, fits on yeah. the rooster one. If you have the rooster one and you need the lid, I think it's the same yeah. one that'll fit on the red rooster and one of their other patterns too. So let's go ahead. We'll get the countdown started. We got a yep. couple bids in there. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, seven six five four three two and one so we're looking for 26 for the bid end you uh bidder active bidders can use just in case if you so desire for years i remember we had no idea who made these and then finally we all realized okay. i remember yeah like yeah. 20 years ago nobody knew bartlett collins i'm more familiar with the glasses i i, I always mm -hmm. find the glasses more than the actual cookie jars Agreed. So it looks like, okay, we had just in case from Steel Whisper, but then just in case from Patty Rose. So I think this is going to Patty Rose for 38. You uh, well, your 51 came in after the bid ends. Thank I you, did. Patty. Appreciate it. I might have to pack this separate from the, um, from the, the cat lamp, I think, just to protect the cat lamp. But yeah. we'll talk. All right. And my last round, I still can't give up on Easter. And these don't have to go in your Easter decor because I know folks collect rabbits and leave them out all year round, but they're going to start at $10 each. Okay. And these are larger ceramic rabbits. Again, great for Easter. You could put a bow on them or you could just leave them out all year round if you collect rabbits. So this is the white one. I do believe these are Japan 1960s, although they're not stamped. I believe they probably had a paper label on them at one time. So we have the uh, traditional like darker eyes, kind of reddish, kind of uh, burgundy, and then we have pink ears on them. So uh, Gina, I see you in at 10. There's no chips or cracks. Um, it's awful weird. You don't see these ceramics for a long time or ever, and then all of a sudden they show up. So this one I had just found in white and it measures six by five, six by five. I had the brown one. I had the brown one. Now, some of the glaze on this is a little matted. So it is a little matted on the brown one, but it is still glazed. And I think it just gives it some texture. So this one is a little matted. I don't know if they didn't have a good day at the uh, factory when it came to glazing them. And this one glistens a little bit. So it glistens just a tiny bit, but it is glazed. And this is your brown one. And of course they painted the eyes the same color, nose the same color. So are the ears. It's just a little lighter because it's brown. And then here is the underside. So there are no chips. There are no cracks. Just note this one, the, the glaze is a little matted here on the back. 
versus the way they glazed it on the front. And again, honestly, these were probably Woolworth, McCrory's kind of Japan ceramics, and they probably didn't command the top dollar. So they were made with higher quality by today's standards, but back then they were probably very mass produced. So Gene is back in at 12, we're looking for 13 or more, and you can pick the white one or the brown one. And the way I had them, you can face them, you know, make them turn different ways and face each other. So let's do a countdown, 13 or more, and you can pick one or two, uh, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Bid end. Again, it's on choice. Gene is in at 12, looking for 13. You can use it just in case if you're an active bidder. And guys, thank you for hanging out with us. We're so honored you're spending some of your Friday with the four of us. Um, we do have a recap coming and we do have our quick claim rounds. And I have on good authority, we got some good quick claims coming. So please stick around just a little bit longer. There's the bid end. So with uh, Robin, Gina, you get first choice at 22. Robin, your 23 did come in right after the bid end. So Gina at 22, let me know, did you want the white one or the brown one? You can take both. And if there's one left, we will send it back. I'm here for them too, Patty. All right, Gina, I got you for the white one. Thank you so much. So Robin, did you want the brown one for 21? And you guys were the only ones bidding. So I can watch the comments. Robin, he could be yours for 21. And we'll get us all moved around here. And uh, I'll wait to see what um, Robin has to say. And maybe Bill can tell us how the recap's going to work. So we're at the point in our broadcast, everyone, where we are going to bring back one more time anything that wasn't claimed earlier. Um, we'll go one by one and show the items. I think we have a robust recap tonight. Um, uh, we'll show everything one by one. We do move pretty quickly. Um, so we will show an item, tell you what the price is, quickly explain it. And if you're interested, you should get your bids in soon because we are going to move quickly. Um, uh, after we see a bid, we will wait a few more seconds uh, to see if any other bids are going to come in. And if we uh, don't see any other bids come in, um, the claim goes to you. If we do see another bid come in within a relatively reasonable amount of time, we will do a countdown. And at this point, Karen Gillette will remain our bid ender and just in case stays in effect during this period. And when you type in a claim for something, if you could put a little one word or two word description in, that would be super helpful so that we can know what of the things that you, we are showing you are interested in. All right. All right, so I'm going to go first. Um, my first piece was this amazing, this is $28 if anyone's interested, this amazing piece of purple amethyst Viking glass, this little tidbit, um, which as I showed earlier, does have a ton of uranium in it. If you are interested in things that glow, it's just really, really pretty. Um, so $28 for the Viking glass, if anyone's interested. And if someone does bid on it and want these really cool glittered eggs that look wonderful in it for Easter. I will I will send those as well. For $25, um, I had two hull planters slash planting dishes. I had this gorgeous, and they're both pink with the aqua deeper green on the inside. Um, I had this leaf shaped one in amazing condition, nothing Nothing wrong with it, 13 inches long. So if you're interested in this one, this one is $25 and you can type leaf, since it's the leaf shape. And these coordinate, both coordinate with Hull's ebb tide pattern. And then I had this really cool looking one too, the one for your breadsticks, um, with the lighter aqua in the, in the center and the pink on the outside. Again, in great condition. If you're interested in this one, you could write 25 uh, breadstick. Why not? Um, I also had that really gorgeous, uh, for $22, that really gorgeous framed uh, painting on wood. Uh, it can come with or without the frame. That's up to you. But the overall frame size is 18 by 15.5. So the painting is $22 if anyone's interested. And then finally at $8, I had the little um, Fitz and Floyd Pansy Creamer with no condition issues. So $8 for the creamer. And that's all I have. All right, John. 
I had a couple of items. I had the uh, fr uh, Frank Horning Easter candy box. This is new old stock unused. Uh, it would uh, ship flat. Um, I just put this together so you can kind of see it. Um, this is $12 at six and three quarters by four and three quarters by two and a half, two and a quarter. It has its design on all four sides. So it's great for display, great for centerpiece. Um, again, $12, you can write candy 12 if you wanted this, candy 12. And then I had the Grant Crest Boy and Girl Gardening uh, figurines. Uh, these are about six inches tall each. She's a little bit shorter. Um, the boy does have a neck repair because he lost his head at some point. I'm blaming it on the girl. Um, this pair was 28. I'll do this pair for 26. In the recap, you can put gardening 26 if you want them. Gardening 26. And over to you, Brian. Okay. I've got a Fenton uranium glass uh, vase. That is a fan, fan base, uh, glows very well. This was $40, so if you're interested in this, you could put $40 fan. There is no damage to this piece. Uh, I had, just showed this a few moments ago, the cookie jar, candy container, whatever you wanna call it, made in Japan, ceramic, $28 on that. You could put 28 cookie. Trina, I see you at $40 for the Fenton. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. So again, this, this would be a $28 cookie. If anyone's interested in that, I had um, lost track for a second. Oh, here we go. We think either possibly Norcrest or, or I think we said Napco. Yeah, Norcrest or Napco lipstick holder, $60 claim. So you could say $60 poodle on this piece. She's fantastic. And what's that? She's fantastic. And yeah. you just don't see that one anywhere. And it's a music box, right? Yeah. And it's yeah. a music box. And yeah. then the last piece I have is a $30 claim. And it is the Mount Washington quilted rose bowl. Um, no damage to it. Cased glass on the inside. Um, anywhere from the 1890s to the 1950s, a long span of time. Uh, no damage on this, some iridescence as, as it's sort of showing in the light. And this was three inches tall and 3.25 inches wide. So you could say $30 uh, rose if you're interested in that. And that's what I got. Okay. And again, before I start my recap, if anybody's watching this in the replay, please remember you can reach out to any one of us for anything that wasn't claimed. Our emails are also in the description. Just shoot us an email, describe what was left, and we will gladly get you invoiced and sell it to you if it still is available. So um, I had one of my butterflies left. These are from Butterflies Around the World, 1985, Franklin Mint. It, this is the Blue Doctor butterfly. So this one does not have its certificate of authenticity. Most of them did that I purchased. This one did not. So if you're interested in this one, they were made in Taiwan. That one does not have its Taiwan sticker. Great details on these. It's $10. So just put butterfly, 10, and that could be yours. No chips, no cracks, which is amazing. Um, I had for 125, I had the Denmark Danish tulip candlestick holders and I will candlestick holders. So I will hold a few of them together so you guys can see. I got you, Ian Kiki. Thank you so much for the butterfly. Let me write that down real quick. Aunt Kiki, thank you so very much and congratulations. So don't want to nick these up, but if you hold the three together, you can sort of see. So I am going to keep all five of them together. These are not from the early 60s but these are stamped Denmark. They're probably later. I can't tell you when, but they did sell them in sets of five. So if anybody's interested, you're going to get two of the larger pastel ones in the blue and in the pink. And these measure 11 inches tall. So you get all five of them for $125. Then you're going to get the gray one. And the gray one does have a little pink chip underneath. That's minimal compared to some that I'd seen. This one is 10 inches, so you can see the height difference. And they do these in all kinds of different arrangements. And then I have the two smaller ones. They are eight and a half inches tall. So eight and a half inches tall. So you can get the set of five. You can mix and match them however you want. And I just want to let you know the paint's in really good condition. The paint is a little worn on the bottom of that one. You can kind of see some of the uh, light wood coming through. So they are 125 if anybody is interested. And if someone's watching this in a replay, just email me. And if they're still available, 
We will get them for you. Um, I had the Hager uh, vase still available. It is in the gold tweed. Let me see if we can get that to focus again. It is the gold tweed motif in that. This is uh, $28 if anybody's interested. It is the smaller version. They call this the gold tweed glaze, okay? So this is the Royal Hager underneath. It is the atomic vase, no chips, no cracks. It's reading tr pretty true to color. It's somewhere between a very, very pale blue to a very, very like pale gray. And $28, it measures nine inches tall by about five inches wide with the sticker. So um, let's do our quick claims, fellas. Bill, do you want to explain yep. how that's going to work? Let me unclick everything here and we'll get us around here where we all belong to do our quick claims. So we're going to move quickly. So don't don't leave. We got some great stuff. We have two rounds of quick claims. The way this is going to work is we're not going to tell you the price initially. We're going to show you the item. We're going to describe it. And then after we describe it, we will say the price. Now, if you're interested, you do not type the price in. After we say the price, we will give you a letter from the alphabet. And you need to, if you're interested, you need to correctly type that exact letter. That letter is the one we're looking for. No, no other letters. Um, you don't type the price. You type the letter from the alphabet into the chat. And the first person to type that letter gets it, if anyone. Um, so I'll do a demonstration round in case this is new to you. Um, so I'm going to show the item, then say what the price is. It's a fixed price, then show a letter. And if anyone's interested, the first person to type that letter in gets the item. Up first, I have this beautiful floral-themed paperweight. Um, it is a nice big size. It is 3.25 inches tall, and it's got some beautiful flowers and a little ladybug in there. And if you look closely on a couple of the petals of the leaves, you see little bubbles. And I'm wondering if they did that to make it look like little rain droplets on the um, petals of the of the flowers. Did I say petals of the leaves? I did. Yeah, sometimes I, I hear myself back like 10 seconds later. Um, but anyway, super, super cool. Great clarity in the glass, as you can see. Um, so I'm offering this, if anyone is interested, for $15. If anyone's interested in this gorgeous paperweight, and if you are interested, you would type the letter H. Anyone who's interested, the letter H, and if there are people interested, the first person to type it can claim it. Fellows, this is our moment to shine. I hope we all have our Scrabble tiles with us tonight. <laughs> I do. Right? Um, I had to bring some more. I had to bring some more advertising um, for this uh, quick claim round. So I have a Springtime Anytime bottle. This is about eight inches tall. It's from the Sheboygan or Springtime Beverages in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. I have these great little birds and on a little sign. Um, I like to do a little education too. This is an applied color label bottle. So that's an ACL bottle. If you know anything about soda bottles, if you see ACL, that's what that means. It means that basically the image was painted onto the um, bottle itself. Um, these are $10 each. I have five of them. Um, so the letter that I'm using again, $10 each, I have five is S surprise for springtime. So S surprise for springtime. Again, these are $10 each. I have five of them over to you, Brian. Okay. I have a pair of, and they're going to look a little bit clear, but they are a very pale pink, uh, candle holders. They were made by Oneida in the eighties. They were made in Korea. They do not have their label, but I, I do know that, uh, from research that they are on, 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 excuse me, Oneida made in Korea. Korea can't speak anymore. In the 80s, they are 9.5 inches tall. They are in very good condition without any chips, cracks, or breaks. Again, they're coming probably through a little bit clear, but they actually are a very pale pink color. So if you like pink glass, um, these might be up your alley. I understand it's hard to see the pink. So if they don't get claimed, um, I can always send more pictures. But if you're interested in these, they are $25 for the pair and type the letter S. 9.5 inches tall, made in Korea, Oneida from the 80s. All right, we'll wait a second for the lag here and I'll move over here and I'll start explaining. I have choice on two 
mystery boxes. They're full of Easter goodness. Okay. So your first one, I have it marked with a number one. So this will be number one. It comes with the plastic old candy container made in the USA. So we know that this is like 80s or 90s goodness because it's still made in the USA. That's part of the original sticker on it. I left it on just for aesthetics. So it is chock full with Easter goodies. It has a ceramic figurine in it. It has some of those 80s wooden ornaments in it. It has all kinds of little tchotchkes. It is chock full. I could barely get the lid on. And then you'll get the new old stock egg art. I'm not sure if you could still use them or not, but I thought aesthetically they're still cool to decorate with. So that's going to be mystery box number one. You'll get that and the egg covers. God, I remember those. Oh man. And then number two is the same exact plastic container. This one is marked number two. And then you're going to get these little Easter and I hope they're in there. I think they're in there because they've never been opened. They're kind of thin. So, um, no, I don't think they're in there. So you'll just get the boxes. That's the only thing in there. So aesthetically, you're getting the advertisement to decorate. So they're not in there. So basically, I'm selling you on the um, mystery box. So this one is chock full, same exact kind of, uh, and they're the harder plastic. They're the harder plastic and the graphics are, I still, it isn't Easter if I don't see these graphics. So you can pick one or two. Uh, they're going to be $25 each, $25 each, and you can pick number one or number two. They are chock full, and I randomly picked out my letter. First person to put in the letter K can take one or two. You can pick as many as you want. They are mystery boxes. They are completely full. I'm There's more than $25 worth of stuff in them, and you can pick number one or number two. You can take both if you want. So, Robin, you were the first one. Let me know, did you want... Uh, the mystery box number two, mystery box number one. If you want them both, you can have them both at 25. And then Lillian, you'll have backup. So just let me know, Robin, one or two. And if you want both. Okay, my last. Oh, can you all smell those cupcakes? No, Bill, keep oh, selling. They smell so good. They smell so good. You drank some haterade today, Bill. So oh. she wants she wants number one. So Lillian, you can have number two if you want number two. I have a sweet little pair of birdie salt and pepper shakers. Now, when I got these, I thought they were probably Goble because they look like the Goble birds, but they're not marked Goble on the bottom. Um, but they're super, super cute. They have this kind of reddish belly with um, the very nice blue back. Um, and overall in good condition. I do want to say that one of the birds does have a repair on the wing right here. So it lost its wing at some point, but someone did repair it. So you do see that little line of glue in the lighter blue area. That is the only condition issue. So I'm going to offer these for $7 if anyone would like to um, uh, put them in their collection. They're 2.5 inches tall, 3.5 inches across. So $7. Uh, and if anyone is interested, the letter U. Okay, getting you over here, John. There you are, sir. So I have a, a bit of a lot. I've done one of these before. I thought I'd do one again for this sale. I have um, the pair of uh, usually attributed to Art Art courting couple in yellow. Um, these are about uh, four and three quarters inches high by three and a half inches wide by two and three quarters inches deep. He has his Japan sticker. She does not have a sticker. They could use a little bit of a cleaning. These are quite collectible. Usually the sort of male presenting ones are found often, uh, not always with their partners. Um, on the girl, there is one condition issue. She's one of her petals at the bottom is chipped off right there. So that's the condition issue I noted on this one. Otherwise than that, I don't see any other issues. But in addition to this gorgeous little couple, you're gonna get a piece of uh, sheet music, the Spring Dreams sheet music from 1908. There is some wear right here. Um, and just some overall, I think there's a little bit of writing. There's a stamp from the com the store that sold it. Um, and I think there's something else on it. Just some, I think, rubbing from like the ink right there. And maybe that's where the stamp is from the store. But I thought they make a great little kind of vignette. Um, I had them in my reel like that. This whole vignette, you'll get the sheet music again from 1908. And that's pretty large. That's 10 and a half by 13 and a half. Um, I also just want to say, if you do map this or frame this, that kind of discoloration was covered up quite easily when I did my quick little matting of it for my reel. Um, so this whole set is going to be $24. So you're going to get the Spring Dreams uh, sheet music from 1908. 
and then the two uh, possibly Arnark courting couple figures, all for $24. If I can find my tile, that letter is Y. So just put a Y and you'll get all three pieces, again, for $24. Back to you or over to you, Brian. My item is a Ellie Smith covered rabbit dish, all glass. Um, it is a green glass. It looks like it would be Vaseline uranium glass. It is not. It does not glow. Just want to make sure I put that out there to everybody. Um, there is a piece of ash. Uh, of course, now oh, right, right here, uh, there's a larger piece of ash right there that got caught. And then there's another, it's very hard to see based on the angle. There's another little tiny piece in the ear. Um, really good condition overall. There is a little rough edge right there, but I do not think it is chipped. I think it's just manufactured that way. Uh, so there's, just wanted to note those, those imperfections. Um, they're really not overly noticeable, but I do like to point that stuff out. This is 4.75 inches wide and it is going to be $18 for the person that types in the letter M. $18 for the Ellie Smith covered rabbit dish. If these are put... so popular. They're so popular right now. These, these, It's like they came back. So good. And that's what we got. Okay. All right. And Bill, thank you for gifting us all of the Scrabble tiles. We all thank now can you. officially have our letters. So mine's going to no be choice. Cupcakes, we have Scrabble tiles. <laughs> Very quickly here, it's going to be $8 choice. Okay. So it'll be um, eight. I told the price already. It'll be $8 choice, but I'll give you the, the letter in a second. So this is department 56. It comes with its original tag. Okay. These are contemporary, probably 20 years old. Okay. So you're going to get the little like resin Easter bunny and his little metal basket, department 56. That is your first one at $8. Your second one that you could choose at $8 is going to be the little uh, snow bunny. He's the little Easter bunny and he is by department 56. So he's in very good condition. He could be your second choice. Uh, or your third choice would be the little Inesco 1980s. These were popular, these little bears. He's dressed up as a little Easter bunny. He still has his Inesco sticker on the bottom. So you first person can pick as many as they want. It are $8 each. It'll be the bunny. It'll be the snow. It'll be the boy. It'll be the bunny, the boy bunny or the bear bunny. And it'll be the first one at $8 choice to put in the letter C, put in the letter C. You can pick which one or ones you want. Letter C, you can either pick the new old stock still has its label department 56 Easter bunny, or you can pick the uh, figurine, the little snow bunny or the bear. And you can take all three if you want at just $8. So Kim, you're the only one I see, Kim. Let me know which one or ones you want. Let me know if you want the bunny at the $8, or if you want the little bunny boy, or maybe you want all three, or you could take the little Inesco bear. You just let me know which ones you want. That'll be bear. Okay, you got the snow bunny. So the little snow bunny is yours. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Kim. And those other ones, they will head up to Mother Tucker's. Fellas, we did it. Let me get everybody moved around here where everybody started out. I hate that. I'm, every time I watch a live, if they don't end up all at the same spot, I don't under, to me, yeah, whatever. Thank you all for hanging out with us. We so, uh, are the Valentinos. We were so honored that you spent some of your Friday evening with us. Um, we will be back in two Fridays at 8 p.m. Eastern. It will be a special sale. So some details will be coming soon. So hopefully you can spend some of your good Friday with us. Karen, thank you so much for being our official mod and bid ender. Please, if you could put Gavin's link in there, we would love to get him some more subscribers. Kim, thank you so very much for being our backup mod and bid ender. We're so fortunate to have you two ladies. Kim, if you could put some of your links in for where you resell, we'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys who came over from Instagram to hang out with us. We'll go around and we'll tell you where we're all going to be at next. And Jason will stop talking and Bill can have the floor. It's all you, Bill. So I'll be uh, right back here on this channel at 8 o'clock on Monday for Mother Tucker's Monday. John. You're, you're muted. muted. Oh, you're muted, John. 
see, it always happens. So I will be over on Instagram on Tuesday afternoon at 3 p.m. with my friend Jennifer of Freckle Faced Finds. If you won or claimed anything from me this evening and you want me to keep your box open through that sale, I can do that easily. Just message me or email me and let me know that. Um, I also have some items for sale from Live Sale Leftovers pinned to the top of my profile on Instagram. You can easily add those to your box if you want to, so check that out. Uh, when can we see you next, Brian? Uh, I keep threatening to have some sort of feed sale. I keep saying that the last few sales we had, I haven't quite gotten around to it yet, but I, I think one is in the works in the near future other than our upcoming uh, our cu upcoming Valentino shows. And how about you, Jason? I will be back on VAMP. We are going to do our first VAMP live sale. We are part of number three, The Blitz, which starts on which starts on Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Misty's going to kick it off. It'll run till 10 p.m. Eastern, and Michael, the Cult of Vintage, will round out the night. Our time slot is at 7.30. So <laughs> Tina's going to be taking the lead with the VAMP sale. So please come show Mother Tucker some support. We will be on at 7.30. Everything that we are offering, it will be $5 start. So there are some good things. We have some PY coming. We have some Fenton coming. We have some brooches coming. Everything will be starting at $5. So please come on over and support us. Uh, we're very excited to be joining the VAMP team uh, with the live sale. So that'll be this Sunday. 7.30 is our time slot, and you can hang out from 2 p.m. till 10 p.m. Then I'll be back with my vintage partner in crime, the one, the only, the world-renowned, who's going to show us what his cupcakes look like here pretty soon, hopefully. I knew he was going to do it. I knew he was going to do it. Just rub it in our face. It's a good thing this isn't smell -a vision because I think some of us would be breaking our screens. But I'll be back with him Monday night for Marvelous Mother Tucker's Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And then me and Enamor Amy will be back on Wednesday for Fantastic Finds. Uh, guys, thank you again for hanging out with us. Please show my Valentinos some support. All of their links are in the description below. Follow them over on Instagram. Uh, follow the ones that have YouTube channels, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll see you back here again, guys. With, with hopefully some one of these days, I have an Apple device so I can do those kind of fancy things. That'll be fun someday. So um, it doesn't work for poor, poor Brian. Can't he can't make it work? So. Nope. Guys, in closing, please be kind to each other. Show some support here on YouTube and Instagram. We got some hard work and resellers on both of these platforms. Uh, tell a friend where you found your goodies. Tell them where you like to come on a Friday night and hang out with these four guys as we uh, carry on and offer you some great vintage. So until the next one, please, everybody have a very good night. And we'll see you back here. I'll see you back here because we'll simulcast on the channel. I'll see you Sunday and then Monday with Bill. Have a great night, everybody.